can't open mine. I should have reopened it. If I can make this four in a row without spilling the keyboard. I yeah. can't get mine. Hell of a streak. Humble C, you sons of bitches. Here we go. Nice. Let's go. Smells great. Yeah, so this uh, this beer was a collab with... Uh, hold on, Jimmy. Show. Hold on, Jimmy. Cheers, on. everybody. Cheers to Jimmy for supplying the beer tonight. Yeah, Cheers. Jimmy. Hold on, Jimmy, get, get that thing up there. Hey, Mike's, Mike's <laughs> part looks better than mine. For once. It's like some... premier. Yeah. Boom. Right there, yep. buddy. Cheers, Jimmy. Cheers. Cheers. Got that, dude. That's good. Really good. Dude. Wow. This is That's fantastic. Awesome. Hell yeah. Thanks, guys. Wow. Holy moly. So this is uh, Cosmic Crocs, a quadruple dry hopped fused foggy double IPA. And... Uh, 8.5% ABV, and it's yep. got Citra Cryo, Citra Incognito, Citra T90, Mosaic Incognito, Mosaic Cryo, Mosaic T90, Nelson Cryo, and Nelson T90. So Citra, Mosaic, and Nelson, but uh, yep. different extracts and stuff. Yeah. So uh, this beer this beer was like hooked up with a brewery from Japan, actually, called, uh, what? Uchi, called Uchi Brewing. Uh, and um yeah, I was so, wondering where they're from. Had yeah. heard of them. So every year we go to uh Yakima in Washington to do uh what we call hop harvest. And that's where we choose all our hops for the next for the incoming year. Uh so we met we met him in uh Yakima and basically that's how our friendship started. Just chatting with them and then through email we cooked up this this recipe. And cool. uh, for one of their beers, they did this like really cool technique that we incorporate into this beer. Um, so that's why it's like quadruple dry hopped. So they well, I was going to ask like yeah. if it's, you know, we have like double dry hop stuff all the time, even triple dry hop. But like what, what does quadruple dry hopping entail? Like what's that process like? So we dry hopped it four and four different times. So it's how, like, how many hops like each time? So our how many pounds? Pounds. So we'll, so we measure when we do a, a hop dosing, we'll measure it in pounds per barrel. And typically for us, it's four pounds per barrel. But I think like breweries that go over the top usually go to like six to eight pounds per barrel. Um, but for this one, we hit about eight pounds per barrel for the dry hop. So wow. roughly around like, so our first dry hop usually is about a pound per barrel. And then we'll finish up the three pounds per barrel on the second dry hop. But for this one, we kind of just spread it out two pounds per barrel, two pounds per barrel. So say this is a 40 barrel batch. So we ended up throwing about 320 pounds worth of hops into the beer. Wow. So what about like the wet hopping? Like how much hops did you put in the whirlpool? So wet hopping is actually like when we add like fresh hops. So into yeah. uh, during the hot side of, of brewing. Dry hopping is usually with just pellets. Uh, so on the hot side, we don't put a lot of hops. We just put like one bag, so one 11 pound bag into the Whirlpool just to kind of give it a little bit of bitterness and a okay. little bit of flavor. But a lot of the flavor comes from the dry hop, which is added after fermentation. But like the dry hop fades quicker than like the wet hop, right? Like, yeah. Uh, so we don't really even call it wet hopping in the industry is just referred to adding fresh hops. Yeah. So, we just call it whirlpool hops, basically, is what you're referring to. Yeah. yeah. But would you say like those flavors that it gets from that are like a bit, like, they last yeah. longer, like they're a bit more robust. Whereas mm -hmm. like the dry hop stuff, it's really potent at first, but it fades really quickly because yeah, not exactly. like as infused. So or... the dry hop gives off a lot of aroma. and mm -hmm. But when you add it in on the hot side, the hops kind of get broken up and a lot of the flavor and like the molecules and compounds get like, uh solubilize into the beer itself so that's that's like how like traditional ipas like because i think most people think of ipas as being like super bitter like very dry mm. so that's like how those ipas are made like they're usually just all hopped like um yeah like when the when the beer is hot before it's like goes into fermentation yeah. or anything like that and that's why it's more bitter and stuff but then like dry hopping 
even though it's called dry hopping, like I know some people I've even heard people say like, oh, it's dry hopped. So like that makes it more bitter because they're thinking like the word dry, you know, like like a dry beer, which is going to be more bitter. But that's not yeah. what it means at all. It just means like the part of the process that it's added and it's actually mm. to make it like sweeter and more fruity. Yeah. And... So you get like a ton more of that fruit character instead of like the bitter kind of grassy notes that you get with like West Coast. So like with the traditional West Coast, you have a ton more hops on the hot side. So when it's when the uh, wort, which is just the sugar water, is just kind of boiling, we add the hops in there. And they have compounds called alpha acids, basically. And those alpha acids during boiling get converted into iso alpha acids. And that's kind of what you taste. That's part of the bitterness that comes uh, from the hops. Hmm. Does, does this one with that process um, take a little bit longer than, uh, you know, something with uh, this not dry hops so many times? Yeah, so we spend a little bit more time having to, like, add the hops. And then once the hops are in, we'll let them sit for a couple days. And then the hops will sink through the beer, and we'll have to dump out the hops from the bottom. And then we'll have to add hops again right on top after a couple days. So... And then this beer took extra long because we dry hopped it and then we sent it through a centrifuge to spin out the hops and then we dry hopped it again and then we dry hopped it one more time. So mm. tons and tons of hops in this one. When when you're doing a collab like that, do you, um, and you're using a little bit of their processes, do you, um, do you stay in contact with them as you, you walk through the process of making the beer or is it something hey this is how we do it you know put your yeah, stuff how did how did they contribute or yeah, yeah. so we got the Basically, we got yeah. the technique from them so they did a beer that was like had a crazy amount of dry hop in it and basically what they did was they dry hopped the beer and then they spun it so they centrifuged it meaning they sent it through a basically big machine and they centrifuged out all the solids and then they dry hopped it again to kind of uh, get rid of all the ho uh, all the all the hops before, and it helps kind of get a better yield for your beer. So mm -hmm. once it's spun through the centrifuge, it comes back out, and then we we'll, then we dry hopped it as it was going back into another tank. Yeah, because also I think you've told me like the more hops you add, the less beer it actually yields because the exactly. hops absorb a lot of the beer. Yeah, because the hops are basically like. The hops are sponges. basically just sponges for for your beer, and you just lose a ton, a ton of volume. Mm. So the centrifuge cuts that down. Yeah, exactly. Basically, it's just a a huge little. Well, for us, it's just like a little uh, thing that kind of like sits against the wall, and it we send the beer through. It spins really fast inside a bowl, and like through centrifugation, it just like pushes all the solids out to the out to the side, and sends a clearer beer back into the tank. So like we, we love like super hoppy beers because um, obviously they're more flavorful, but I know like it's not just a matter of like adding like, you know, like the more hops, the better, because I'm sure it's like challenging as well. So like what, what, what kind of like challenges are there like with making a super hoppy beer? Uh, at some point there is like a saturation of like amount of flavor that you can get. But if you add too many hops and you don't really take care of the the time, like if you don't give them, like if you don't dump out the old hops before you start adding more hops, you'll sometimes like get that, you know, hop burn, what they describe yeah. as hop burn, just like the really, really green flavor. So you yeah. just have to give them time to like kind of like mellow out and settle out. That's what centrifuging also helps with. You get rid of a lot of that hop matter and it cuts down on that hop burn for sure. And how long did you say this one took to make in total? This was probably about three weeks. From uh, the... from making yeah. the wart to when it was canned? Yeah, exactly. Three to four weeks, I think. Somewhere around okay. there. Dude, it's super good. I mean, it's yeah. just yeah. Getting, as, it war <laughs> as it starts to warm up, it's just getting better. Yeah. It's yeah. fantastic. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's really, really good. It's really good. <clears throat> yeah, so I, I first met Jimmy um, because I guess you were following me on Instagram, but then, uh, we were both following a brewery that we like called monkish. That's in LA. And I had commented on one of their posts. So then he saw like that. I like craft beer and stuff. So he messaged me. He was like, Hey man, like, um, 
I've been following your photography for a while, but I saw that you also like beer. I brew at Humble Sea, which was a brewery that I already knew about because they're really good. And he was like, can I ship you some free beer? And so I said, no, <laughs> obviously. Like, what are you doing, Bruno? Stop messaging me. You said, I'll take a, yeah. you said I'll take a sweatshirt, though. Yeah. I'm basically paparazzi. paparazzi that's super. Here. That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. that was that was like 2021, I think. It was a while yeah. back, a few years ago. So yeah. he started sending me packages of beer, and uh, I would mainly get IPAs because that's what I like. So, um yeah, so Humble Sea does a lot of hazy IPAs or New England IPAs, but you guys call them foggy IPAs just Yeah, we call fun. them foggy, yep. Just because of, you know, NorCal fog. West Coast fog, yeah. Yeah. Are you, yeah, are, you in San, uh, are you in San Fran? Is it in San Francisco? Uh, Santa, Santa Cruz, Cruz, so like an hour and a half. Santa Cruz. Yeah, yep. hour and a half yep, south of uh, San Francisco. Okay. Sounds like a yeah, road trip, guys. A, yeah. I've had yeah. a ton of their stuff. Um, double IPAs, triple IPAs, quadruple IPAs. Uh, I don't know if you guys have done any quintuples that I've had, but definitely several quadruples that were really good. I know North Park did like a quintuple that was like 15%, which is like yeah, wild. Your project has done a few that were really good. Yeah. Oh, mm. I don't know if I want to drink a 15% IPA. It's, it's fun. Dude. It's a novelty thing. Yeah. yeah. I'll just, uh, I'll keep my 15% beers to step. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. That's it right there. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, like all the artwork is super cool. Like this one, Cosmic Crocs. It's always like kind of funny, uh, interesting names and things like that. Yeah. Here, let me grab something real quick. I'll, I'll show you some of my favorite ones that I've hung on to. <laughs> yeah, oh, we used cool. to uh, we used to go pretty wild with uh, the can labels, but yeah. we got to cut. We have we've had to cut back on uh, a lot of the fun ones. Do you Why have that? a Do you have a specific artist you guys like, or do you just like yeah. farm it out, or what do you do? Yeah, we've had we have one. You'll see why we had to cut it back, though. Just because of the names. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Red Flanders. Oh, yeah. That, that one this cost one a little was, bit. This one was really good. A triple IPA with Phantasm. Bart Shrimson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's really yeah. cool. We've had some companies ask us to cut it back, so we had to cut gotcha. it back. Gotcha. Yep, yep, yep. Palmer Shrimson. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. And then I don't have the cans, but you guys did some Harry Potter ones like uh, Neville Fogbottom. That was a really good quadruple IPA, yeah. I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those how, long have days. You, how long have you been there, Jimmy? I've been there for about four and a half years. How'd you get how like how'd you get into brewing? Like what was the uh I was uh studying biochemistry in college and like my career path was I'm gonna go work in a lab. And I decided in my like fifth year of college, I was like, no, I don't want to do that. So I just, I picked up drinking Smart. beer when I was 21 and I was like, all right, I want to work in beer. And that's kind of just, I started as a brewer, I started as a bartender at one of the local breweries and kind of just worked my way up from there. Gotcha. Was that cool. Captain Fatty's? Yeah, Captain Fatty's. So you're like a bartender first? first? Yeah, bartender first. And then I got on the packaging line, helping with canning and stuff like that. Then eventually learned how to brew on their system. Okay. That's I moved cool. to yeah. Uh, I moved to Humble Sea in 2019, and that's where I've been at now. Now I'm the barrel aged guy on Humble Sea. How many nice. uh, how many like brewers do they have there? Like how big is the company? At Humble Sea, on our production yeah. staff, I think we have 11 to 12. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And your you and your sign? specialties the the uh, barrel aged stuff. Yeah, barrel aged stouts and barrel aged brown So anything dark. Mm -hmm. Do they have? Uh, just one location still, or did you guys open another one somewhere? So we have uh, one spot in Pacifica, which is 20 minutes south of San Francisco on Highway 1. Right by the... Give me one sec. Yeah. Definitely sounds like a road trip. <laughs> Dude. Oh, I know. I've been I, love, there. I, I, I love Santa Cruz. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, Santa it's Cruz a is a nice... Uh... It's a killer little beach town. It's just got that, yeah. that old school vibe. I love yeah. it there. It's got a charm to it for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you're saying there's uh, one in Pacifica and then. Uh, the, we have one in Alameda, which is like East Bay. So it's mm. like this not so much abandoned like Air Force Base or military base area. Uh, but there's a few other breweries there. There's like a craft malting company there. Is that uh, right across the river? Right across yeah, from uh, San uh, Fran? Yeah, it is. So you Dude. can see the San Francisco skyline in the. I've been there. The bay. Yeah, yeah, that is such a killer spot. That old Air Force Base. Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah, that that is. I was there. I think in um, 
probably 17 or 18 went to a, a pretty big brewery there and i was like wow this is such yeah. a killer spot uh, you probably went to faction which is like yes super it was yep, yep faction yep, it was faction it was such a cool spot that's mm. awesome it's I mean, a really it's a place i mean was that, just, was that just when you got out of alcatraz man <laughs> yeah, I, I, I swam for he it. Swam, and, swam uh, from, yep. <laughs> I knew it. No, it's it's like the perfect spot for just a killer industrial vibe for breweries, restaurants, or whatever. And it's just right across the bay, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. Nice. Yeah, it's a really nice little spot. So there's like two other breweries there right now. And then so we just opened it up in like in the middle of fall, I think, like October or September or something. That's so badass. Yeah. So what are you sipping on, Jimmy? I am drinking Oud de Ble from Side Project. You can see it. It's kind of hard to see. It's, there you go. Oh, there you go. There you yeah, go. Yeah. This is a Missouri a Chardonnay barrel fermented Missouri wheat saison. And uh, Side Project is probably my favorite brewery. Uh, they make some of the best barrel aged stouts in the world, <clears throat> if not like the number one. Barely stopped. Most expensive too. Yeah, pretty pretty expensive, but pretty well worth the price of admission. And they make some pretty killer sours as well. Yeah, the only time I've had side project has been when you've brought bottles out when we've hung out. I think, mm -hmm. like, uh, we drank one that was really good. That was like sixty dollars or something. Yeah, it's super wild. And that's Gee, how you get want... it directly from them because there's a lot of resale stuff. Like people will resell them for like three hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Do you? From the creative side, do you like to try other people's stuff and then say, okay, I like what's going on here with this or that or whatever, and then like work that into maybe uh, your creative uh, craft? Oh, yeah, all the time. Okay, Bruce cool. Stomping? Sure. Yeah, like, yeah, Bruce Stomping for sure. <laughs> Bruce Stomping, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I try to incorporate a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, what Sod Project does into uh, making, to making my beer. Try That's to cool. Out how they do it. Yeah, I was. I was wondering. I've always wanted to ask that question of yeah. from a, someone that's in, in the field, and yeah. I, I think that would be you'd absolutely want to do that. Yeah, I think like I think it'd be. I think you'd be remiss if you didn't like reach out and look for other beers that you really really like and not try to incorporate into what you make. You know, it's like uh, doing photography. You kind of like look around, see what inspires you, and like kind of try and incorporate right. into what like for your, sure. your own vision for sure. Yep, raises the game for everybody. So when yeah, you, yeah. If you're trying something new, do you do it like super small batch first, make sure it's good, or do you just? Yeah, I do a small yeah. batch. So, the brand Darkest Treasures, uh, uh, the one bottle with the green label, that's like my brand for very experimental, like very low amount of beer, super nice. experimental stuff. Kind of just like, all right, I want to try this, see how it goes, because uh, right. not all the time the Darkest Treasures brand making the bottles. Sometimes okay. I don't make enough. Sometimes I do make just enough to make in a bottle. So I was wondering that same thing, Mike. Good question, man. Yeah. You gotta try it out first before you send it. You know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, sometimes I just I do just send it as well. So you know. Because you know, dude, you've been doing it for so long. You're just like <laughs> yeah. you're like you're like this thing's gonna be a freaking heater. Yeah. yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will. Well, uh. We'll definitely keep the beer chat going throughout this, but um, we'll start looking at some photos. So the photographers here that don't care about the beer, those are wrong photos. Hold on. Whoa. Talking about those, you today, Hold on. Dude? Those are talking garbage. about you today. <laughs> hold on. Wait, what? Pretty self-important. Hold on. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, those my oh, sorry. Yeah, no, <laughs> are you still getting out enough, Jimmy, to take some photos and have a good time? Yeah, I haven't been out in a few weeks, but I we had a really crazy like tropical storm come through, mm -hmm. uh, and like the waves were absolutely killer for like oh, cool. a whole week. Did you get out? Yeah, I was I was out for uh, I was out like every morning before work. Nice. nice. Oh, good for yeah. you. Yeah, I posted some of the photos in the in the folder. Oh, cool. Dude, this is a good pick right here. Wow, is this yours, no. Jimmy? This no, is you. You, <laughs> you yeah. select no, no. You selected it though, right? Yeah. yeah. I wish uh, I wish I was Rachel Talbert. <laughs> Man, this is this is nice. Yeah. I I think we've maybe had one of her images on before. Maybe yeah. not though. And we have. Uh, I'm yeah, pretty we sure are. we have. Yeah. yeah. 
but uh yeah she makes some incredible like ocean photography like oh her images are just like so powerful to kind of like look at and to view and i love in this photo like the the like the lighthouse and the kind of size of the wave kind of gives like this crazy perspective of like look at this massive wave compared to this lighthouse even though like the lighthouse is like probably pretty far back in the background there's just this like contrast yeah looks like the wave is just like about to swallow it or something yeah yeah is that that's crazy is it i mean it's hard to say the perspective here is it uh is she on a pier is it a long lens what's going you know what i mean it's like really hard to i i feel like it's got to be compressed like that's got to be like some long lens compression it looks pretty compressed yeah, yeah. pretty compressed yeah. yeah it's definitely a long lens yeah i mean it's pretty sick i mean the way it's just you know you're really you got the focus point in the front with that just gnarly wave and that um foggy scene behind it with the uh, lighthouse is is pretty badass yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah there's one of those images that like definitely has a, a, a story it, you know it's like poetic like mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> and you almost don't notice the lighthouse right away like the wave catches your attention the most because the most contrasty like textured part of the scene and then that lighthouse is kind of like a secondary like element that you notice afterwards it's kind of like a ghost coming out of the fog it's like it just kind of like throws you off when you notice that because like at first it's like oh it's just like a wave and then you see this like tiny lighthouse like oh whoa like what i initially thought like wasn't true like it's there's actually way more to this than i thought yeah and you know why you're taking it it's a black and white i mean you know it you're like hey this is this is going to be a black and white image it's perfect for that yeah, yeah. especially yeah. that foggy misty sort of thing like the just you got to do that in black and white and i think that adds to the power of the scene too you know it kind of strips away any distraction makes it just about the power of the wave the texture in there yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah her work like, is really remarkable mm -hmm. and like even with these like super powerful scenes she also has some like really nice quiet scenes that are like very kind of just like peaceful and like and it's just like so contrasted too like this powerful wave and all these storm photos that she has. Yeah, I love her work of like all the sand patterns and like small little shells with water swirling around them. Like it's all really intentional and really creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super yeah, well you done. Don't, you don't really see because like a lot of her work is very, very original. And, you know, she's definitely a big inspiration for me when I do like ocean photography. Yeah. Yeah, she's like the queen of the sea mm -hmm. in the photography <laughs> sure. world. Yeah, <laughs> She grew up like on a boat, too really yeah she grew up like uh on a sailboat or something like that with her parents like they lived on one for several years or something like that that's really sick makes yeah, sense really sick. Yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah she has such a passion for it it just it shows it's so evident in her body of work which is immense it's like you you can't really create that kind of connection body of work yeah and that connection and that cohesively if you don't have that super deep driving passion for the subject matter she obviously does um it's just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Super nice. I think it's near. Um, she shoots a lot near where she lives now too. That <clears throat> that that particular area is prone yeah. to some really pretty awesome wave action and yeah. things yeah. bouncing around and smashing. Yeah, even with the storm that we just had, I didn't really get a lot of lot of like wave action like this, it's like super crazy. Yeah, get a lot of like stuff crashing off the the bluffs and stuff, but like nothing you don't like get to see a lot of like crazy formations like this yeah her whole series of like the i think it's called the sirens of the sea series right. maybe that's what it's called but it was like these different like greek like mythology characters right. like gods and like stuff like that like these waves had like faces in them and stuff that was really crazy yeah. that was like yeah. some of the first stuff i saw from her yeah. so the like uh, her photo face off is like insane where it's like careening off of a uh, off of like a pier or like a yeah, it's like a barrier thing, wall. like a jetty you like a seawall or something like that yeah mm -hmm. and you just Sounds see like crazy a so ghost good. face yeah. yeah it's like the scream so mask cool. or something yeah super cool that's pretty yeah. sick yeah, she's got great stuff oh, this dude wow. has nice stuff yep. um, yeah yeah, that's, yeah that has I, money i remember when i first saw this i was like holy shit is this like a microscopic <laughs> photography microscopic photography or like what but basically it just looks like an amoeba or like some kind of thing that comes out of like a cell, you know. That's exactly what I thought. An amoeba. Yeah. It's kind of wild to kind of like see.
you have no idea what the scale so cool. is here. It could be like a really yeah. big puddle, really small puddle, like microscopic yeah. ripples and like really soft mud yeah. or like bigger ripples in the sand. Mm -hmm. He's in Alaska, right? I think he's uh, Pacific Northwest, actually. <laughs> yeah. I think you're thinking Alaska because his tag is like AK because his name is Aaron Cron, but he goes by Jack. Oh, it's like his middle yeah, name. That, that don't make sense. It's like AK-31 or something like that. Oh, AK-47. Tacoma. <laughs> he's he's at a Tacoma, Washington. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, he's got some he's got some stuff, man. I I follow him, but I haven't looked at his stuff in a long time. That's wild. Wow, yeah. man, it looks like it looks like uh like mercury, like that yeah. metallic metallic liquid kind of vibe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if this was like taken on a beach or just like walking through a forest, but you know, it's just super hard to tell and like super pleasing to look at the ripples and. Just like it almost looks frozen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you go down to the bottom, like bottom, like just to the left of the water, it looks like it's kind of frozen, maybe. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I think yeah, it's, I don't know. I think it's like the blue reflection and like that white sheen that it has that gives it that look. Yeah. He uh he hashtagged it all uh close up hashtag Wanderlust. Hashtag, hashtag Wanderlust. Yeah. <laughs> so I think whatever it is is small. It's not like a... Yeah, it looks like there's almost like ripples too in that like puddle as well. You can see like like it's yeah. a straight up lagoon. It's probably yeah. just a lagoon. beer on a bar floor or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. a good call. Yeah, that blue beer, you know? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm glad you picked one of Jack's images because I've been wanting to feature something from him on the show for a while. There's just yeah. like such a long list of photographers I have in mind. Yeah. So many good photographers nowadays. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I feel like there were like 15 people when I first got into it, like that were like professionals. And then now it's just like everybody is amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, like, and not everybody's even professional anymore, right? Like a lot of amateur photographers are like absolutely incredible too. You know, they don't do it full time, but they are yeah. absolutely crush it. Right. Yeah. It's just like mm -hmm. a lot of people have reached that level. Whereas before, it was kind of like, you know, there was just like a handful of guys we really looked up to. Mm -hmm. We were trying to figure out how they were doing stuff. And then now it's like everywhere I, I look. I know what that is. You, I mean, is that, do, you, do you think that's like technology, like on the post-processing side? Is it like social media? So you're just getting more exposure to it? I, I mean, think it's a yes. New, right? Yeah, I mean, like they've always been out there, but now we can find each other. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I, I don't know how. Maybe. A lot of people just started recently and they've gotten really yeah. good, I feel like. Like, like they've only been doing it for like four or five years. Yeah, yeah. I just started like three or four years ago too. So, you know, I think yeah, I was going to say you started like in 2020, 2021. Yeah, so COVID, like COVID definitely was like a big, you know, pusher for getting outside and people picking up like their cameras to go shoot hey. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, like personally speaking, like, I don't think I would have had the drive to, um, like continue into photography if I didn't have as much um material like learning to learn from so readily accessible mm -hmm. and so I, you know i wonder if that's kind of what's kind of catapulted people whereas like if you rewind 20 30 years it was like if you wanted to learn where you're going to get a book i mean maybe go to a workshop but like it's like you plug into youtube or, or you know download some tutorials and you know you have right. tons of information mm -hmm. readily available and i don't know and the only <laughs> work you would be seeing is you know stuff out of magazines oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be a hashtag ad at Eric Bennett tutorials. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> brought, brought to you by our sponsor. <laughs> yeah, it's it's gonna be a commercial break right now. It's gonna come on right now. Get ready for a groundbreaking new video by the world famous award winning unforgettably epic fine art extreme adventure landscape traveling lifestyle photographer Eric Bennett. In this video, you will learn about exposure blending, luminosity masks, dodging and burning, color separation, and much more. Adding rainbows, moons, another moon, more moons, adding lightning, adding hammocks, adding tents, adding girls, adding everything. Buy it now. And for an unlimited time only, you can also sign up for a workshop, buy a print, or take an exclusive private special post-processing lesson, at full price. VHS copies can also be ordered upon request. Visit BennettFilm.com and get yours today before these babies sell out. 
Three, two, Iron one. Back. Boom. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I gotta plug that. Gotta plug that book. Oh yeah, you know. Of course, it. I dig. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's, that, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I I found out about Jack because he took a critique group, which you've also you did a critique group with me, Jimmy, at yeah. one point. Mm-hmm. Did you just do one or? I just did one. I remember you wanted to do the Rachel Talabart one, but you you didn't, right? Yeah, I did not. Yeah, I think it sold out super quickly or something. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I found out about him because he took a critique group, and so then I was looking at his work afterwards. I was like, geez, man, and followed him right away and. Mm-hmm. He's been like doing incredible stuff. Yeah, and it's like a really like he's really on it too with like posting and everything he posts is really really good and just like yeah, it's like oh this is like definitely worth looking at and kind of just like viewing you know. He's a very nice guy as well. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, it sucks because I'm I'm looking at like I used to see his stuff all the time. Kind of like what you were saying, Paul. Like I don't know, he must have like fallen off my algorithm because i feel like i haven't seen his stuff recently i'm just scrolling through the stuff that he's been posting i'm like man, those damn crazy. algorithms all the time yeah dude he totally fell off mine i just went through and just like God. looked at like 20 or 30 images i'm like shit these yeah. like bombed him. Yeah, i haven't seen any well, of it yeah more like recent bombed him. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys totally been looking at, you guys have been looking at too many uh, beer photography things yeah <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> good uh really great pick jimmy for sure. Yeah, like I, I knew I wanted to feature Jack on this, uh, but I think this was like the photo that kind of just like really, really blew me away when I first saw it, and it really stuck in my mind. And that's like, oh yeah, I really have to feature this one. Yeah, yeah. Very so similar. you you just got into photography like in you know a few years ago. What was kind of like your first love with photography, like the coast? Like, yeah, definitely the coast because I've lived by the coast pretty much my whole life. Yeah, and you know. It's like you already had a connection I, there, so then yeah, that's and the first I can thing just walk. To... So I lived 20 minutes away from the coast as like a kid, and then when I went to college, the beach was like literally a two minute walk, and right now the coast is still like a five minute walk away from my house. So I've kind of just like never left the coast. That's yeah. cool. Can't yeah. Complain. So what what got you actually like just like picking up a camera? Like what was the impetus for the first like hey? So I I started with Astro photography actually, and yeah, uh, I thought Astro, Astro, I thought I thought being Astro bro was super cool, and yeah. um, you know, <laughs> Wait, like, <it's> not. <laughs> 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 and uh, I remember seeing like a lot of the Astro photography uh, photos, and she was like, dude, I really wanted to do that. So it took me to some like it took me to Death Valley for my first time as well, back in like 2020, 2021. Um, and I kind of like fallen off the astrophotography kind of train and, uh, I kind of just do, you know, intimate abstract and like staying up super late in the middle of the night. Kind of stuff. I was going to say, yeah, it sucks staying up at three in the morning. Yeah. Oh yeah. Your, uh, your death Valley stuff. Sweet. You did a good job there. It's, uh, Thanks. it's nice. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't been in a, in a hot minute, but I've been trying to get back, but I haven't been traveling as much. Well, because you you're making try. amazing beer. Oh, yeah. Ready to try another one, you guys? Absolutely. Sure. What do we got there? Right, so this is, uh, I forgot what this one's called, but this is uh, our basically our smoothie beer, smoothie-style sours. So this one is Surf Squatch Super Pops, yeah. and this is Ventana Berry Burst, 8% smoothie sour with Marion berries, blackberries, raspberries, and blueberries. And yeah, it's in it's collaboration with Ventana. Where's Ventana? Ventana is a surf uh, surfboard shop actually in town. Okay. So um, that's cool. We are super close with them, and so we just decided to create a beer together. I think they were doing some type of uh, sale or something, so we just made a beer for that event. Great. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we did a collab with them explodes. a few years ago. So is there really a berry called Marion Berry? Like the yeah, there is. Yeah, I think it's yeah. the uh, BC. Yeah, I think is it's it might be that that might be the berry of Knott's Berry Farm actually. It's it's a fantastic berry. It looks like it's it looks like a, um, a blackberry on steroids. Well, you guys I mean, know what I'm talking a, about, though, right? Like the yeah mayor of DC, like smoke yeah. got his job back. Remember the Chris Rock thing? All right, I don't know. 
<laughs> no, no, he, yeah, he had a little crack act, uh, incident. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's actually bred in Oregon. Yeah. And it's uh it's basically a... a subspecies or a uh they say a cultivar of blackberry. Hey, I used to pick these when I was about fourteen for about a buck a crate. <clears throat> a dollar so a crate, man. Yeah. Now it's like now it's like ten bucks for a ten bucks a crate. I know they're expensive, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. That's I know good. one of it's... these one of these exploded in transit. Was that Jimmy's or Mike's? That was mine. Yeah. Um, so it arrived and it was it was um, it was emptying itself when I opened the box. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the thing is, like, uh, damn freezing temperatures. Uh, yeah, Jimmy sent them out, sent them all out on the same day, and mine came in like two days because California is pretty close, but Oregon yeah. is also super close. And uh, Paul's took like well, August. Jimmy's took like ten days, and Paul's yeah. took like two weeks. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, mine hit that perfect storm. Yeah, no one was delivering the storm. That's right. Yeah, forgot about it that. It was during that big cold snap too, so yep. Yep. didn't stand a chance. But spilled a little bit. Yep. Like any, basically anything you had ordered, they just canceled it. They just weren't delivering anything. Yep. It was just yeah, gnarly. It's too yeah. bad. All right, <laughs> so this beer, I hope you guys can taste uh, all the hard work I put in because I got on the scissor lift. Went to the top of the tank with all the boxes of fruit and poured it all in. Yeah, how many trips up with that? Uh, it was definitely a few because I think there was roughly like so each box is forty-four pounds. We probably put in like four to five hundred pounds worth of fruit. Wow! Fruit in there. God! Wow! Yeah. It's great, dude. It tastes really good. It's yeah. got a really good flavor really to it. It's uh, it's definitely a little bit thinner than like a lot of the East Coast uh sours because we we spin it through the centrifuge. Because if we don't spin mm. it through the centrifuge, it doesn't go through our canning line. <laughs> like it just clogs up. Like, uh, yeah. sucks for you. It's like like hard work, like having to do that. But to me, it's like my dream job. Like that would be fantastic. Like where I just oh, sizzle, yeah. dump fruit in a can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sign me. Oh yeah, yeah, man. Just just sweat at the top of the tank, dude. Just like. Ugh. I bet. You'd, you'd have to taste it, you know, just to make sure it's right, and that's the hard part too. You know, it's just. Yeah. It pretty much pretty much tastes exactly like you'd imagine with this berry combo, and yeah. it hides the eight percent really well. Like we drink a lot of smoothie sours, but usually they're like six percent, seven percent, like Mortalis and stuff. Um, so what goes into like making a smoothie sour? Like, so yeah, it's so uh, is this like a Berliner Weiss base to begin with, or what kind of a yeah, base are you doing? Yeah, that's actually very similar to how we would brew a. Uh, foggy IPA, lots of like super light Pilsner malt, so super light, uh, super light grain, and then we'll add a ton, a ton of wheat, um, just to add protein, which like adds uh, to the haze. So yeah, foggy so IPA, yeah, the pump, yeah, exactly. We're gonna pump up the pump of the base beer, uh, and so a lot of protein adds to like the softness of the beer, and in foggy IPAs, the proteins create that like really stable haze in uh in hazy beers right um then we'll ferment it out with um a sour yeast so basically we get uh 500 gram bricks of yeast that produces uh lactic acid and um the yeast will ferment out the beer to about 10 uh, to about like 10 to 11 percent and then we'll fruit it back with a bunch of fruit puree down to eight percent okay so there's like several ways to like make these beers a lot of people still kind of do this um overnight sour where they'll well they'll they'll essentially brew the sugar water and what they'll do is they'll add actual lactic uh lactobacillus which is lactic at like which is lactic acid bacteria that's like a kettle let, sour yeah kettle sour exactly and they'll let the lactic acid basically uh kind of chew on a little bit of the sugars and that'll just kind of create the sourness uh for us we'll just add the sour yeast into the fermenter itself hmm. And the okay. yeast itself will just create, um, will create the lactic acid. So yeah, this, this, is, this one isn't this is, yeah. like super sour though. Like it's not super tart. Yeah. It's pretty smooth, which I like because sometimes they're like they're too sour and tart, where it's kind of like sour patch yeah, yeah. or something, and it's like hard. So to once enjoy. you start hitting like uh, the three point like five to three point four pH, um, mm -hmm. it gets really really sour. So this is probably up there around like three point eight, three point nine. Okay, that's really good. It's like Bennett said, it's super smooth. 
super smooth. It's yeah, really super nice. drinkable. And like sometimes I find that like <clears throat> a lot of the the East Coast style smoothie beers get really really thick mm-hmm. and syrupy yeah. sometimes. So I really like them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't really uh, I don't really drink a lot of uh, smoothie beers anymore. I do make a lot of them though. Yeah. Yeah. You guys do uh, super pops like what once a month. Every two months. Yeah, somewhere around there. Especially once nice. it starts getting into like the warmer temperatures, we'll make a, we'll start making a ton of them. For sure. Uh-huh. Have you hit any of that uh, Brujo stuff, Jimmy? Uh, yeah, I have. This is actually super crazy good. Um, we're doing. I'm surprised a you guys haven't them. done a collab with them. Oh well, I'm gonna spoil it a little bit. We're doing a collab for our seventh anniversary, so. Nice. Stout I'll send IPA. out a IPA. I'll send some to you guys. I just oh, stood yeah. in that line for an hour and a half last weekend, so it's oh, yeah. near and dear. It's near still, and dear to my heart. <laughs> where is he? Does he have a brick and mortar? Is he still brewing out out of uh, Great Notion? No, he's so he went from Great Notion over to um, Ruse. Was he Living House or Living House? Li- Living House. Living House, and then um, for the last six weeks, maybe eight weeks, he's been um, building his brewery, which okay. is right down the street from Great Notion, mm-hmm. and. Uh, Dude, it's looking sick as fuck. Nice. So, it's gonna open here in about uh, five weeks. Oh shit. Five six weeks. Yeah. So nice. it's gonna. He's it's it's a pretty cool scene down there. I mean, mm-hmm. he's putting out really good stuff. He just did a collab that with Ruse Brewing, and he's mm-hmm. doing a collab with a Great Notion. I think both yeah. those are gonna be stouts. But, nice. Uh, his shit's great, man. Yeah, I love Ruse. I need to, Ruse I need to send you some. I'll send you some. All right, we can do a trade, dude. I'll send you our, our Brujos collab when it, whenever it comes out. Okay, dude. yeah. You want a stout or you want IPAs? Uh, I want stouts mostly, but I rarely okay. do IPAs anymore. Okay, I'll, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll hook you with some stouts. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you look at my fridge, it's like either barely sour or barely stout. Okay, I got you. Usually not, usually not in between. No, that's cool, man. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked for this thing to open up finally. Yeah. Mike, is it is it downtown Portland? Yeah, I gotta go grab that. Good. It's in uh, it's in it's in the northwest area. This is a little bit of an industrial spot. Okay. Um, and it's literally maybe ten minutes from downtown. Mm-hmm. It's been so. it's been years since I've been to uh, to Portland. I've been to Seattle quite a bit. Well, if you come out, hit me up. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to do uh, actually the Ridgeline Trail around Mount Hood one day. Oh yeah. 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 That'd be fun. Mm. Yeah, that'd be a fun. It's not. It's a. It's a pretty good one. It's um. There's quite a bit of elevation gain and loss mm. around that, and I think. I think, and if you want to pick it, pick it up a notch, you can do it in two days. If you want to take it a little bit chill, you can do it in three. Yeah. Um. But there's some good stuff around there. I'd probably do it in three. Drag it. Drag along my camera gear. Yeah, I would. I'm. I'm. I'm on the three. Three uh, move as well. Yeah. I thought you were going to say right. you're dragging a cooler. <laughs> no, we can bring it's we like, can bring Bennett. Damn. He's a freaking mule. That guy we we'll oh, bring yeah, him dude. and and he can carry like a twenty four pack for us. I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it before. Dude, He's a 20, savage. He'll bring a twenty four rack of Keystone, dude. Call it a day. <laughs> yeah, he's an he's an animal. Oh man, when's the last time I right, had a Keystone? Never. I've never no had way. one. Oh, never had God. a Keystone. It's been. <laughs> It's been 15 for me, at least. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's been uh, three this morning. I don't even feel like I see it anymore. Yeah. yeah. Are they still brewing in Pennsylvania, I presume, but maybe they're not doing it anymore. Well, yeah, What's if I drink a macro, it's usually just like a Miller High Life or like a PBR or something. Yeah, super chill, right? Mm-hmm. Not even worth it for me. <laughs> 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 yeah, bro, you got you got TF Brewing there. You got like TF Brewing is actually crushing it with the loggers. Yeah, they're good. Mikey, what's the verdict? Dude, I love it. So I do like I've I've kind of like what you were saying, Jimmy, about the East Coast versus West Coast. I actually like this a lot better. I think it's got a lot of flavor. Like I've, I I I do like the the ones that we get out here. Like the Mortalis, they're good, but I grow tired of them pretty quickly. Um, and like this is something a little bit more in line with like something I would see myself drinking a little bit more frequently, like seeking out. Like I feel like if if I had ready access to him here, I'd buy a four pack of a sour, you know, like I don't know, once a month just for shits and giggles or less. But like something like this, if I saw it about all the time, like this is super good. It's definitely a cha- nice change of pace. Yeah. 
All right, you guys, you hear that? We're cutting Mikey off from the Mortalis. <laughs> Mike, come on, bro. Oh, man. I still got a ton of it in my fridge. I get, Mike's cu- I, I get Mike's yeah, cut. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I have a buddy uh, who, like, has, like, two chest, like, freezers just, like, in his garage, just, like, full of beer, just, like, just chilling. And, like, they're, like, years old. I got, like, a tw- – I think I have a 20, 22, even more Hydra still. And that oh, really? shit does n- it does not fall off. <laughs> yeah, it does I had one that was a year off. old at least, and it was still really good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's didn't skip a beat. I, it's all those I antioxidants, that one. dude. Oh, it totally is, right? <laughs> I mean, they're just coming. They come strong. Yeah. <laughs> you would I think, think the fruit had, yeah. would go rotten at some yeah. point, you know? Like it yeah. would some. But it like would... it's yeah, all the CO two basically just like because like the act of rotting is because of oxidation. Right, right so if like, they can it really well, it's not exposed yeah, exactly. to oxygen. Yep, exactly. I don't, do, you, do you guys know if Mortalis pasteurizes their beers? <clears throat> no, I they always say like drink it fresh and stuff. They oh, okay. they don't they don't tell you to hold on to them for a long time, but I inevitably do just because. I mean, stuff just gets lost in the back of the fridge, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For it's not like sure. IPAs where like you're crying when it's like a month old and you still haven't cracked it yet. Yeah. Like oh. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, it's still gonna be good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I this one uh, Yuki yeah. just posted like a week or so ago. I, I think I just saw this recently on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This one really is crazy. like it's crazy, and I can't really. It looks maybe just like a bunch of snow, but it almost gives me the vibe of like being looking down on a mountain or something. Just the wind blowing and all that stuff. Yeah. And just like there's just so much like movement and like texture and power behind it, you know. But it could yeah, be no, like a large no scale, scale photo. Yeah. Or it could be like a small scale photo. It I seems it. like it's a hard like a hard thing to capture too, like that blowing snow, like that precise moment. Right. I don't I don't know, like this one seems really tricky to like uh execute because you'd have to be ready for it, but it'd be also yeah. like difficult to pre visualize because I wouldn't like expect something like this to happen or mm-hmm. Yeah, and it just looks like you're looking at a mountain peak, which is like the way the snow is patterned and like how it kind of just like kind of curves upward almost. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. He got a really good pattern with this one because sometimes it doesn't make sense. But this this pattern he got with the flow of the blowing snow is just it's it's really great. Yep, it pulls you right up to the top and like right through the image from the bottom of the top. It's one of the better images I've seen of this subject. I mean, it's really, really great. Yeah. It's no, like, it's not. No. It's, around here, it doesn't last like that at all. Like, it, it's, it usually warms up once the sun hits it, and it won't mm. blow like that at all. But I feel like I'd lose a, a finger or, or a five <laughs> in, the, in the cold waiting for that moment to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like I could, like, see this just, like, being at his feet or, like, also just, just on the side of a mountain, you know, just, like, Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Eric Bennett, like uh, Eric said, I almost called him his bias full name. Uh, like Eric said, it's you better, like, there's dude. no sense of scale. <laughs> we're not gonna, hey, bro, you're like, hey, hey, we're friends, but shit, come on. <laughs> so, 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 question, Jimmy. So you you've done the collab with the uh, um, the folks from Japan. Have you ever made the trip over there to uh, to? I have, I have not do some uh, of that work and do some photography. I've because not. I've always wanted to go because to Japan, everyone on this call right here will roll. <laughs> go to Japan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a freaking package deal. We'll all go with you. Yeah, we all gotta hit the, the Japanese it. photographers, and we'll just have like a party out there, you know. Seriously, they're all super. You could cool, do your brewery so, thing. Yeah. We could drink your brewery thing. Yeah, and, and I've been talking back and forth with Mark Davis. He's all about having us out there. So yeah, is Mark Davis he, uh, native to Japan? No, no, he's from the no. U.S. It's from Arkansas. Okay. Uh, was in the service, and his wife is Japanese, though. Oh, okay. Uh, so he's out there all the time. Yeah, he yeah, he lives out there permanently. That's badass. That's, cool. That's cool. Yep. So, so beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Plant the seed. Come on. I mean, my friend, wa- my friends wanted me to go out, but I have a trip down to uh, Patagonia in like three months. What? Fall yeah. Patagonia? That's sick, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah. Just doing the W trek in the Torres del Paine. So you're going in March or early April? Uh, like yeah, early April. Yeah, we'll be out there for like two it. weeks. 
because the the W closes like April fifteenth, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. always been closed. No, the been the O closes uh, April fifteenth. The W is uh, open longer. The W is open longer because like the O like takes you around the back of the park. Yeah, it's like more remote. So the W is like pretty like the, the more open one. But I think it still closes like before closes the end in, of April. Yeah, it closes like yeah pretty pretty soon after. Because I I've always gone to argentina first like to el chalten because that's like the color changes there earlier in the year and then i've gone over to torres el paine it's a little bit lower elevation and stuff around like lago poa and stuff and yeah that's always like early may and it's it's always been closed so i haven't been able to do any backpacking there mm -hmm. yeah it seems really sick though mm -hmm. there's lots of wildlife in that park yeah, yeah, yeah. super excited Pumas, guanacos i'm trying not to get eaten by a puma though it's a good idea Try to avoid yeah. that. <laughs> they do bite. <laughs> yeah, this image is insane. I, yeah. I remember seeing this one and thinking I wanted to feature it at some point. I've been wanting to feature something from Yuki as well, because yeah. Uh, yeah, he's got really great work. Dude, Japanese, the, all the Japanese photographers I follow, they are incredible. They absolutely I know. And I just found like five more this week that just like, I, I don't even know how I found them. They just like randomly popped up, like is recommended or something. Yeah. And I was like, damn, there's more of them? Yeah. They're also like really. They're also really tight with each other, which is super cool. It is. It seems, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it I mean, I, I imagine the community. I imagine it's kind of a small community. It's it's not the biggest country in the world, you know. It's just an island, so mm -hmm. they're yeah. probably all in the same area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like a super cool uh, culture and community. This one blew me away when I saw it. Yeah, a couple this weeks one ago. was crazy. Anna Morgan has got to be like the number one like repeat. Like yeah, uh, there's like number five for her, I think, on yeah. our show. Oh yeah, but uh, well deserved. Mm. Yeah, for sure. No one's complaining. Yeah, yeah. She, nope. she dropped I something today. It was a, was like, oh my goodness, a banger. Yeah. yeah, she'll be back on here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I when I saw this one, I was like, what the hell is this? Like, it's. Well, when I first saw it, I thought yeah. it was like a satellite image of like or or like some, like I didn't see who had posted it yet. Like I just saw the image, like just caught my eye right away, and I was like, I thought it was like some kind of like CGI thing or like digital art of like earth like colliding with like another planet or something you know like it's crazy and then i realized yeah. it's like the the iridescent biofilm that i've photographed a lot in in utah yeah so is it just like the breakdown of like like organic matter by bacteria and just kind of gives yeah. off all this color yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's like this oil that film that yeah. uh like this film that forms on the surface if it's left mm -hmm. alone for a long enough time yeah that's wild. Mm -hmm. like, I just don't. Do you know what's creating that like white background? It's just like different like concentrations of the oh, film okay. will mm -hmm. give off different colors. So if it's thicker, you'll get like warmer colors, like uh, like the oranges and like yellows and reds and stuff. If it's really thin, it's usually white, and then if it's a little thicker, it gets like blue. From my experience, at least. So like most commonly, you find it. It's like blue or white. Oh like kind of milky yeah and then if it's like really concentrated it, it you get like a whole mosaic of colors mm. yeah this one was super cool it's like just the shattering of a planet or something you know yeah i think yeah. in the yeah. uh in, so i think good. in the sarah sarah marino episode we had something about milk that milk yes <laughs> milk <laughs> yeah, i remember what it was yeah. <laughs> so this reminds me of something that like also happens in beer called um so when you make a sour beer and you like um, inoculate it with um, uh, a yeast called Britannomyces, basically what it does is that it creates a biofilm as well called a pellicle. And it kind of just like floats at the top of like, if you look inside a barrel, a sour of a, of a barrel aged sour that's um, inoculated with Britannomyces, you'll see like a bunch of these like kind of bubbles forming, creating like this biofilm on top of uh, the surface of the beer. Hmm. You ever take photos of it? I have not, cause it's just cause there's like no light, and I've never thought about it until <clears throat> just now. Mm. <laughs> Here we go. So maybe <laughs> I will. <laughs> Super cool. Um, what's your least favorite thing about brewing beer? What's like the least enjoyable part of it? My least favorite part of it is adding yeast. All your friends to, uh... want free beer. Yeah, that's fine. I I'll give them free beer if they want. Uh, my least favorite part is like adding yeast to the beer. I don't know why it just is because like we so when you use yeast uh the yeast will kind of like just like a sourdough starter you can just keep on reusing the yeast that's inside a beer so 
we'll add the yeast to the beer. The beer will finish fermenting, and then the yeast will do something called flocculate. And when they flocculate, that means they kind of just like gather up into kind of like big bunches, and they all fall to the bottom of the tank. And from there, we can just uh, harvest the yeast into a keg, and then we'll reuse that yeast for another beer after. Uh, but wow. like, but like adding the yeast into the beer for some reason is just like my least favorite thing. I don't really know why it just is. Hmm. What, do you have different uh, strands of yeast on that? Uh, we do. So, yeah. uh, so basically we can kind of divide yeast into, um, kind of like two <clears throat> separate, uh, kind of like two separate main bodies of beer. So lager yeast, and then we have ale yeast. And, yeah, Cause there's uh, like, uh, like thiol or thiol boosting strains and stuff that like bring out more character and hops yeah, and exactly. stuff. Exactly. Yeah, so lager yeast is your kind of like bottom fermenting yeast. They ferment slower, they ferment at lower temperatures, and they kind of like give a more clean kind of a fermentation. And then you have your ale yeast, which kind of produce more flavorful compounds. And that's why when you brew a hazy or a IPA, we'll use ale yeast. And that'll kind of give off like a lot of flavor compounds called esters. And that's kind of what's responsible for a lot of like fruity aromas in your beer. Super crazy. It's such a complex, like, and I guess people you could say kind of, yeah. And people are kind of, like, dabbling in, you know, GMO, GMO yeast, right? Where, like, they, like uh, Eric was saying, like, thiol boosting yeast. So when they ferment, they'll kind of change a lot of the, they'll um, ferment a, a lot of thiol products. And that's kind of, like, what gives a lot of crazy grape, kind of, like, white grape flavor. Yeah. So thiol is a... Uh, Thiol being like kind of refers to a lot of sulfur compounds. And we all know like sulfur compounds kind of like give off a lot of, are like very pungent. And um, right. basically the Rotten thiol eggs. yeast, yeah. The thiol yeast kind of like converts a lot of that sulfur compound and give you a lot of like kind of boost in that white grape flavor. Yeah, I know you uh, use it a lot when you use like Phantasm or... Yeah, and Phantasm is Nelson. a freeze-dried like grape skin. Yeah. That's what Phantasm is. And it's like pulverized those... grape skins. Yeah, exactly. And those those grape skins contain a lot of thiol compounds and the thiol boosting yeast will munch down on those thiol compounds. And that's how you get like a lot of crazy tropical flavors. Get the most out of it. Yep, exactly. There's a uh, brewery around here that does, uh, they do mostly sours, but they do mostly wild fermentation. Do you know what that is? I've always uh, wild, so uh, wild fermentation is using yeast that is native to where you live. Um, okay. So, they you just like either, expose it to the open air, right? And let yeah. the yeast that's so, like floating yeah. around. Yep. Right. So either, so when they do that, they specifically specify a spontaneous fermentation. You just kind of let, let stuff fall onto the beer. When they call it wild fermentation, I, what they, I think they do is that they'll harvest or they'll, they'll take a, a sample of that yeast of the, of the wild yeast and then they'll grow it up enough to mm -hmm. uh, inoculate that beer. Okay. So um, I'm not sure if you're talking about like Hill Farmstead. No, um, well, they, I think they do too. No, I was talking about Hermit Rush, but mm -hmm. um, it was much smaller than Hill Farmstead. Yeah. I haven't had a lot of their beers. I just know I follow them and they're, they're always talking about wild fermentation this. Wild yeah. Fermentation that. I've never understood what it was. I think other half out in the Finger Lakes was dabbling in it a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure if other half still has a sour program or not. I think they had a, I think they had a wild program for a little while. But, uh, the only bottles I see them doing now are stats still. Yeah. Not really. So like a, a lot of uh, sour programs have kind of just like disappeared because the, the demand for wild fermentation prod, uh, beer has kind of like gone down quite a bit. But well, a lot it's of the difficult, people, time consuming. Yeah, exactly. It takes a lot of space. And if you do it wrong, you can contaminate all your other beer. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> so you need delicate. like, yeah, you need a lot of separate parts if you want to make really, really like wild beer because Britannomyces and other types of bacteria are very virulent, and they will, like, infect mm. all your other beer very, very fast if you're mm -hmm. not on top of uh, cleaning and stuff. Yeah, sounds... So that's why a lot of, like, breweries that specialize in sour beers, they don't make a lot of other clean beers, just because, like, there's a very yeah, high chance of them infecting other things. <laughs> all these guys yeah. do. Liability. Yeah. What do you feel like is kind of around the corner for beer? Like what, what kind of like new stuff is in the works that you think will become more mainstream? Uh, I mean, it's every year is going to be the le year of the lager. Cause I think, you know, slowly, but surely every year, like lager starts to like kind of 
get a climb back into the mainstream. Well, you can uh, only like go so crazy with like, you know, yeah. dry hopping and mm -hmm. sours and like, yeah, you can only turn the volume up so much before you have to go back down. Like there's no yeah. other direction to go. So hazy IPAs are here to stay. They're never, they're never going to leave, but a lot of people are turning back to the cleaner, cleaner West beers, Coast. like West coast lagers. Um, a lot of people have stopped drinking a lot of like pastry stouts. Uh, we don't make a lot of like non barrel aged stout anymore. We mostly just make barrel aged stuff because you know you add the complexity and if you're gonna add that many ingredients to something, might as well just make it a barrel aged beer instead of a non barrel aged beer. Nothing like super groundbreaking though, like like really good yeah, non alcoholic beer or. Uh, I mean, we've been doing a lot of non alcoholic beer for sure. Yeah, like hop we, water. Yeah, we do a ton of hop water too. How, how like are those? I've been curious. Actually, I drink a lot of hop water at the brewery, just so because like it's super refreshing, nice and crisp. And, uh, is it like a lot... LaCroix, but yeah, you got, it's like a LaCroix, familiar but it's beer flavored flavor? With, or... Yeah, flavored with Citra or Mosaic or Simcoe or something, you know? Yeah. Um, but we've been selling a lot of our non-alcoholic Pilsner as well. Mm. People will people will drink the non-alcoholic Pilsner in between beers. I didn't know you guys mm. are making those. Mm. Interesting. How yeah. close is it to a normal Pilsner? Honestly, it's not far off. Um, you're You're still missing a lot of the complexity from like fermenting with a lager yeast. Yeah. Um, and like it's very stripped back, but you get like the essential flavors of like the noble kind of like noble grassy hop flavor, like you would think of like you know a pilsner. But um, yeah, a lot of breweries are starting to pivot to, towards more like low ABV, non-alcoholic options. Um, yeah. People are starting to find it that it's very hard to capture like the the younger demographic people who are just starting to drink. People are trying to figure out like the best way to capture people who are just turning 21, 22, like in. You know, because they've been growing up with like seltzers and kind of like right. crazy like cocktails and stuff, you know. So it's harder to get people who haven't been drinking beer to like get into beer when they have so right. many other options. Right. I actually like didn't like beer at all, though, until uh, I would say I got into it in like 2018, maybe like right after I got married, I started trying stuff mm -hmm. like I, I yeah. drank in high school and stuff and, you know, random yeah. crap that you could get mm -hmm. whatever you could get the homeless dude to buy you at 7-eleven yeah. but yeah when, um... your first, yeah when your first exposure to beer is in college and it's like you know of course right. lighter but lighter something like that it's you know it's, it's kind of hard to like think that there's leaves a bad taste that. in your mouth literally yeah yeah but, exactly. uh, yeah so like i i had no idea that this kind of stuff existed until my friend jimmy mm -hmm. geekus that's in san diego showed me like the really good stuff and uh mm -hmm. here i am yeah. making a show about it and Mm. <laughs> yeah and there's definitely like a retraction in the in the beer industry as well a lot of breweries closing and all that stuff so, yeah 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 that's been pretty so crazy. It's, it's hard it's hard it's hard to compete with like people who just kind of like want to get fucked up and it's like why would i drink a beer when i can go drink like a bunch of white claws and stuff like that yeah because exactly. it's not cheap like so if you're trying to drink like 12 beers this is not the way to go it's going to be like a 200 hundred dollar night yeah exactly yep. you know whereas yeah other stuff like but for me, where I just drink like one beer every other day or so, you know, maybe five, yeah. seven beers a week, it's like yeah. six bucks for a beer is nothing. Like, mm -hmm. the 14 White Claws sounds pretty good. <laughs> I mean, they're making 8% <laughs> White Claws now, so. Right there. They're, they're bringing up the ABV. Yeah. Triple White Claw. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> no laws when you're drinking claws, baby. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> I feel like I saw a non alcoholic White Claw somewhere, too. Uh, that, that, yeah, that's like, just a LaCroix. Uh, like, yeah, that's a LaCroix. Why, what's the point of... Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> brand recognition. Cool All right, this one is... Uh, I love I love both of these uh, both of these guys over here. Pet Petros and Claudia Kublis. They make some really incredible, dreamy photos. And this one's just like... When I first saw it, I thought it was just like more mountains, but it's actually just <laughs> looking into the distance of like water and just like just a lot of texture, a lot of waves. And yeah. just like that serene kind of just like white all the way towards the back just like super draws you in they have these really crazy like atmospheric mm. ethereal seascapes like where it's just water and like clouds are you know very simple but so dramatic and like they do so much with so little somehow i've been following them for a while but i just realized today that it was two people when i went and looked at their account because i was trying mm. to find the because it's, yep. it's PC Kublis on Instagram, mm. so I was trying to find out like the actual name. Yep. Husband and wife. But I have combo. no idea like whose photos are whose, but mm. 
they they seem to both be really good because all their stuff is really consistently amazing. Yeah, super dreamy, super like ethereal, like you said. That's it. Yeah, and the, the interesting thing about it is like, I, I love how like the the sea is kind of angry, right? Like it's churning, it's not mm -hmm. calm, but like yet the photo has this like kind of dreamy ethereal feel, like you guys said. And, it's and like conflicting kind of emotions. Concept. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's that's when I first saw it. It was it was almost confusing in a very good way. You know, it's just yeah, it's still cohesive. But it just feels calm somehow at the same time. Yeah. Like it's it's pretty amazing they're able to do that. Yeah, you just kind of follow it from like from bottom to top, and you just like kind of ride this like wave of emotion. You know, for sure. Yeah, that's a good way to frame it up. Just like if you if you follow it through the image, it's. It's there's a lot going on there and it's pretty beautiful. Yeah, hey guys, we got some work to do. Yeah, yeah. You guys gonna tell? I really like water. Uh -huh. Yeah, we yeah. I was expecting you to bring some seascapes and stuff to share with us. So, mm. <laughs> not surprised. Um, yeah, they've they've got really great work though. I recommend mm -hmm. to check out their account. Like, I, I don't even know how I found them. But uh, I've been following them for a while, so mm -hmm. I recognize this when you sent it. Mm -hmm. really, and they have uh, a, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Jimmy. Yeah, they have a ton of, yeah, like Eric said, they have a ton of scenes like this that kind of just like give you this feeling of serenity, but you're in the middle of the ocean, you know, where, where you're kind of isolated, but you also have this feeling of just like calm and serenity. Yeah. What, what, are, we, what, seems... what, what are we opening there? So I, I've been really curious about this one because you guys did this one what last year and then by popular demand. Yeah, you, uh, so this is our again. second. This is our second collab with uh, Killer Acid. So Killer Acid is a art company. Oh shit! And um, they do. And if you look at the label, they they made the label. And obviously, with uh, the name Acid, you got to make it a crazy color. Okay, so it smells like straight up dank weed. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so we, so there's a company called Abstracts Technology, and they create, um, they they will isolate the terpenes in weed and create and turn it into a water soluble extract, and that's uh, what we put into this beer. Is that what weed is in the same the same plant family as hops, right? Yeah, they are they are they are cousins. They look like identical, like yeah. the cones and yeah, exactly. Except hops are more like... like a vine, whereas. We yeah. is like you know, like a plant. You know, a pot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's not that I would know. Like, that smells like straight weed. Yep, it smells so, and it's green. Good. First green yeah. beer I've ever had. I think. So we use uh, we too. use uh, spirulina. Wow, green and, cheers, green man. To make it green. Okay. Yeah. So it's healthy. I mean, it's good for you. Oh yeah, it's, super, it's a superfood. Superfood. Wow, that's really nice. Yeah. It's very good. It's yeah, uh, it's is... a pretty pretty crazy beer. Dank smoothie Keep, triple yeah. IPA. 10%. Killer acid. Yeah. Unbelievable. I also With went citra, to the top of the tank. Yeah. Citra, pineapple, mango, passion fruit, spirulina, and terpenes. Yeah. You may have seen it, said it already, Jimmy, but what what's Killer Acid? Killer Acid is a art company. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we're really good friends with them. So they made the they made the label for the beer. Oh, cool. Yeah. Dude, you're banging the eight to eight and a half to ten percent freaking smoothies. That's uh that's pretty sick. I know you guys crushed the high ABV stuff, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. That's really good. Yeah. I I when I saw the color, I was like, eh, I don't know about this, but it tastes <laughs> phenomenal. It is really yeah. really unique and good. It's super unique beer. Just like when I when I first smelled it, like when it was first finished, I was like, yeah, this smells like straight up weed. <laughs> and like if you smell the if you smell the extracts uh the terpene extracts you're just like oh yeah that's like marijuana yeah, yeah. when james poured this he was thinking something was wrong like maybe it'd gone bad <laughs> or something yeah i'm like well i felt like i was back at a dead show again <laughs> <laughs> yeah it must have been you know something in that last beer we drank yeah we need to film a show live at humble sea oh yeah, yeah we do. great idea yeah, i'll fly fun. for that Dude, wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be sick? Uh, yeah. We just, yeah we just, I was yeah. gonna. I was gonna say, dude. I got like when I got some time. I've got a couple of uh, weeks off coming up in the kind of beginning of summer, and then some towards the end of summer. I was thinking about like a Portland trip, dude. We should. Uh, oh we yeah. Should do a little road trip down there, and yeah. 
get that up. We can shoot. Uh, we can shoot in Big Sur or something. Yeah, that'd be I, fun. Uh, that's when I'm yeah. more free to do that kind of stuff. So yeah, good. Good. Right, dude, let's keep, let's keep that on the docket because yeah. I would love to do that. A West Coast trip summer. Yeah, yeah sweet. I'm down. Yeah. Right. Drive, one, yeah. drive, one way uh, ticket is all I need. Drive down the coast and then drive over to uh, the Sierras after. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love that. Well, yeah. Let's, I like where your head's at. Yeah. yeah thanks sure. for getting this one for us, Jimmy. This is the first smoothie well, triple IPA that's been drank on the show. We haven't had this I, uh, before. Well, when, uh, <laughs> when, we were talk- when we were talking about this uh, this episode, we were like, and this beer was coming, I was like, yeah, I got to save this for the guys. For sure. Yes. Yes. And it was canned Good like call. just a month ago, barely. Yeah, this is uh, right up your guys' alley for sure. That's insane. It's delicious. Mm-hmm. Cool can art too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they make some really. Uh, we sold. I remember when we did a collab with them. We sold a um, the first collab. We did a. We we made an ashtray with uh, their art on it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's really cool. Yep. Yeah, they make some crazy art. Super cool to look at for sure. That's cool, you guys. Um, you see that more more often than not now, where um, breweries are getting in with like collaborations with these artists and doing some really, um, really nice work. Yeah, and it's like yeah. um, the presentation is like a super big thing now, right? With uh, with a lot of breweries, like you looking on the shelf, you're just like, all right, what am I gonna pick to drink with from like twelve types of hazy IPAs on the shelf, right? Uh, you're like, all right, which one has the coolest label? I remember back mm-hmm. in the day, that was like, <laughs> exactly. all right, how was I going to choose a beer? Oh, yeah, this one has the coolest label. So it you adds go... to the experience, though. Like, Yeah. When you, take a picture, when you take a picture of the beer and the label, you're just like, oh, yeah, that's that's sick. Like, right. um, my favorite breweries have, like, some of the craziest labels. Like, Holy Mountain is probably one of my favorite breweries. Holy Mountain has some pretty incredible artwork on their uh, bottles and cans and stuff. I think Burial is the best. Yeah, Burial is super oh, they're, sick. Oh, yeah. They're great, man. They... Yeah, Burial is super sick. Brujos Dude, is good. they are so good. Brujos mm-hmm. is good. Brujos has been really cool, yeah. Mm-hmm. Monkish had some cool stuff for a while. Yeah. How often do you guys um, drink Treehouse? Do you guys drink Treehouse often? Never anymore. I, I, I do. Well, I, I have. Like, I haven't recently. Um, I don't know. It was sometime within the past six months or so. Uh, so my, my mother lives, uh, like, literally a quarter mile from their brewery. So oh, every once in a while, I'd, like, visit her, and she'll be like, here, yeah, and she'll have, like, a... <laughs> palette of it that she yeah. bought for me um but uh yeah it's i don't know i feel like it's kind of falling off a bit yeah yeah it's kind of crazy how big they got actually like yeah. they, oh, have they were big. like the number one yeah, yeah. crazy and lines like, and stuff people and they, and stuff. Yeah. Their King julius is still pretty good um that's yeah that's always kind of been their flagship yeah uh, that's one of my desert what? island beers actually julius yeah i would desert be island beer. mine would be They're jasper opening a, from yeah. They're opening a new tap room, maybe brewery. I, I didn't catch all the fine details uh, in Saratoga. So it's like a half hour north of Albany, a half hour south of where I live. So it's like a big, it, it gets a big summer attraction. There's a big yeah. concert venue, horse racing mm-hmm. and all that. Yeah, I mean, they have a they have a country club and then they have like a farm and they've like invested a lot in like different beverage programs as well. Like you can get a latte in a can for them or something like that. And like you can get like gin or bourbon for them, so they're really turning into like a big kind of like beverage conglomerate, you know. In ten years, if they do a retirement community, it sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go. We'll go visit James over there. <laughs> this is a motherfucker of an image. And yeah, when this I saw one this, is I was crazy. like, crazy. Jesus, I'm gonna have nightmares, yeah. and I was just like, yeah. what the fuck. Uh, so Fucking I want to feature Kevin because uh, he's he's a local photographer to me. I haven't shot with him personally, but he's you know. an SF. Yeah, but um, I remember this photo also stuck with me when I first saw it. Like, just this face. Yeah, like you said, this face is gonna haunt me. Can you room. imagine having like a sixty by forty print of this on your wall or something in your bedroom? Or... Yeah, no, or just like have it in like you know somewhere where somebody can walk into your house and you're just like staring right at you. Yeah, it's it's like it's like uh, that. Uh, what's that guy's name? The the scream painting, the famous one, something Munch. Uh, uh, the the Edward Munch. It's isn't it called Edward the Scream. Is yeah. it called the Scream or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it, it's like this haunting face like it looks like it looks like a person turned into a tree and like mm -hmm. in this like excruciating moment where they were like frozen like in yes. all this pain like it's just like yeah. a really haunting face it's, it's crazy it's it's like it's got just, eyes yeah. the nose the mouth everything like yeah, I'm claiming this for the Halloween episode next year. Dude, <laughs> no, we already featured it. You gotta find. He he had another one too, though. That was pretty crazy. I think. Yeah. This is a motherfucker. That was a good way to put it. Yeah. Wow. I feel like yeah. it, almost like every episode or every other episode, we have something from like a tree trunk that is just mind blowing. <laughs> is this the same one that we had on the Halloween episode? No, we haven't had this one on before. We had another one. We we've had several. Uh, I know. That's what I was saying. Peridolia photos. Yeah. Yeah. Good word. Good word. Yeah, I'm not drunk enough yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, give it time. It was five we haven't hit the stout yet, baby. Come on. Yeah, we haven't hit the stout yet, man. Yeah, Jimmy's like, hey, it's yeah. almost game time. Yeah. I, I I love the tones in this in this photo too. Just like this kind of shift from like the brown tones to like the light kind of these light blue tones here, just like on the other half of the face. You're almost like ripping it apart, you know. There's like the separation. Yeah, that that like white, like really soft, cool blue is really nice with that kind of like orange yellow bark. Mm -hmm. It's like so well. contrasting and like it kind of gives us that clash of just like <laughs> faces. This, like, as you said, this person gets turned into a tree or something, you know? Well, that's the thing. Like, it's not just like the shock of like, oh, it looks like a face. Like, like it's not just like novelty factor. Mm -hmm. It's also like a, a really nice, like visually aesthetically pleasing image. Yeah. Like, it's like a warm, cool color contrast, yeah. nice lines yeah. and it's got flow to it. Like. Yeah, there's like this Phantom of the Opera kind of like feel to it too, you know, like with a half mask, half like half yeah, white it's split mask. like right down the middle, eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I think too, digging a little bit deeper along those lines, you know, most of the time with an image like this, I would probably focus stack it and try to get it sharp edge to edge. And he definitely didn't. He clearly didn't do that, but that adds to it. It's not and necessary because the no, face it's just, really, is more it's pronounced. Really not, and I think it it really pulls it in right where you want it to be but i mean typically again typically with something like this if you're trying to you know a pattern like that that's kind of macro ish you'd focus second and it's so much it's so much better that that didn't happen because it, you know he's, he's it's like he's using the the sharpness or the focus to hone you in even more you know? i think people forget about that like you know that contrast between soft and sharp in order to draw right. focus and create right. separation accentuate right. your subject yeah, yeah so no, no like question drive to have everything be always super sharp and it's not but it's also soft I mean, enough where it feels intentional because if it was like just slightly soft it might be annoying but like yeah. the fact that it's like pretty soft it, yeah. it makes it feel like it was done on purpose which it might yeah. have very yeah. well might have but yeah sometimes even if you do something on purpose it can feel haphazard no it's also, yeah yeah it I mean, also not, like, yeah, yeah. go ahead go ahead James. I was gonna say by not stacking it like what you guys are talking about, like it makes the face pop more. Yeah, we just said that, James. All right, yeah, I mean, just, in a different way, you jerk. <laughs> you just said that, dude. Yeah. Oh. It also it also gives it this this like unreality almost yeah. feel with like the softness. Yeah. You know, For like sure. if it's too sharp. It's, it's probably like, AI. I think yeah. that's how he's pumping out so many amazing images now. It's, like, it's just AI. Dude. There's no way he's shooting all these. Yeah. <laughs> where is he finding all these scenes you know tapping a keyboard yeah. just typing like a fucking madman yeah. <laughs> yeah but it gives us like unreality of like no this isn't it feels like this isn't a real thing but it actually is and just like you know it just kind of gives this feeling of wow like how could this exist yeah right this for would be sure. a sick uh sick thing for brujos to hang in their tap room or Fuck yeah oh, yeah Fuck Which, yeah, yeah. All right, should, all right, yeah. Bowman, like, Bowman, you gotta that, pitch it. I bet you they'd buy that shit. Yeah, Bowman, you gotta pitch it. Okay, I'm on it. I'm on it. I've, uh... Mm -hmm. yeah, you guys were talking about collabs earlier. I've been trying to, like, hint to TF Brewing that I want to do, like, a collab beer with them, or, like, uh... I don't know. I talked to yeah. Pure Project a while back, and they were interested, but then it kind of just fell through. Like, fizzled out, yeah. Yeah, like, like using one of my uh... photos for their can label. Yeah, I've always wanted to use uh, one of my photos for a beer label. Maybe I'll do yeah. that at some point. Uh, mine, mine would be better, but yeah. Yeah, Bowman, <laughs> have you ever heard of Floodland Brewing in uh, Washington? What's it called? Floodland Brewing. I have not. Floodland? So they are, yeah. So they are probably one of the best barrel aged 
sour producers in uh I mean they're not all necessarily barrel aged, but they are probably one of the best wild fermented breweries in in the nation. And they use a lot of photos for uh for their for their beer labels. Cool. A lot of very abstract very a lot of abstract like kind of ethereal images for their for their beer labels. What what are they called again, Jimmy? Floodland Brewing. Why Floodland. are you telling Bumman though? You should tell me and I can do a collab with them. Yeah. Well they are in uh they are the close closest to Bowman because they are in Seattle. Right, but he doesn't shoot that the sick abstract shit. That's, that's my <laughs> hey, they don't want anything to do with Utah folks. Yeah, <laughs> said, I mean, yeah they're like, what's the desert? I don't even know. Let me see. Do you even drink me, beer, uh, dude? Grab a label. In Utah. <laughs> Let's see. All right, I'm grab the label. Let's see if you can see it. This one's called Time Eternity. It's blurring it out. There you go. Oh, there you go. So that's a photo of like a nest or something. Yeah, it's just a bunch of like it's like a plant or something, but mm, it's super, like a clump cool. of twigs. Yeah, but super cool. Really, like they make some of the best uh, barrel aged sours in the, in the United States. I was gonna say, uh, I don't see you sipping on anything. Do you need another? I'm still, working, still working on, on that. I'm still working on. It. I mean, I have what? like, I've gone through most of the bottle. What was the ABV on that? Like eleven, nine? On this? Eight. Uh, six. Okay. Six percent. So I'm chilling. Nice. But that beer was like a gin barrel age saison, and that's like incredible beer. I had it again recently, and it's still really, really good. Yeah, saisons can be nice. Some, uh, yeah, the ones I, th I think the best ones I've had are ones that you've given me from like Psy Project and then like Saint Adarius. Yeah. Yeah, we'll Those have to. Good. If you guys come to Santa Cruz, I'll go to Santa Adarius. They make really, really good beer. They're in Santa Cruz. Yeah, they're in Santa Cruz. Nice. They are uh, they are definitely a world class uh, brewery as well. Yeah, they specialize in like barrel aged sours. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Looks like uh, Floodlands in uh, Seattle. Yeah. Two, uh, since 2017. That's that's cool, man. So Adam, the owner, used to work at Holy Mountain, and uh, okay, he left to go uh, start this brewery, and uh, they've been crushing it ever since. So it's like wow. uh, it's a club only brewery. So, really? Well, it's a club only, and then they do public sales every so often. But they are pretty well regarded across the nation. Huh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So if you really want to drink barrel aged saison, you gotta look up these guys for sure. Yeah, that's cool, man. Sweet. All right. Well, yeah, nice, well, nice stuff you selected to share with us, Jimmy. We're on to me. Uh oh. <clears throat> now it's time to. <laughs> All time right. To trash your garbage. I'm ready for the critiques. <laughs> <laughs> This is sick. We're gonna come down hard. This, this, oh. this is absolutely the one that I wanted, and then like Eric I grabbed it right away. <laughs> yeah. You bastard! Before no. I passed you guys the link, I I made my yeah. selection clear. You guys can pick from this, but I already got this one. Yeah. So good luck. Yeah. yeah. So you you haven't been shooting for very long, but you've already been putting out some impressive stuff. And I remember when I saw this one, and I saw that it was you, I was like blown away because this was like a year ago or so. Like it was, yes. it was a while ago. Yeah, I shot. I shot. I think in yeah, I shot in twenty two, two thousand twenty two, I think, and like it took and me six months. Six months to like actually like post it or something. These uh these sand dunes have been shot to hell, like everybody knows. So when I see something unique, I'm always super impressed. And this one was super unique, like just incredible light and that that contrast. Those like really dark shadows, but it's like done really tastefully, like. Yeah, I just love this one, man. What uh, what uh, what can you say about it? What uh, yeah, I remember. How do you feel like uh, it happened? So like, I was walking up to the sand dunes like at like four p.m. Yeah. So I was like on the far like you know how there's a parking lot, and then you can like walk further right of the parking lot. Right. So I was like walking yeah, up. That, is this mesquite or where? Are yeah, you? this is mesquite. Yeah. This is mesquite. Yeah. Uh, I never, and, I never hike out from the parking lot. I always park on the road and hike out from yeah, there. I do too. Yeah, I that's the one. The yeah. I usually park in the parking lot and then I hike out to the right and then I walk up to the shorter sand dunes like on the right. Because all the like... footprints are right there by the parking lot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you have the main sand dunes on the left, but then you walk up to the shorter ones. I remember yeah. like cresting over one of the smaller sand dunes and I just saw this kind of like isolated, kind of like in the just just this small scene just like out there and like, oh shit. I probably have like a hundred or so frames of this just like chilling yeah. on, on my hard drive. I'm just uh, the, like... The curviness of it and like the accentuated like edges is kind of like sensual too. It kind of looks like 
like a butt or like boobs. Like... <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, you got some you, you got some you got some, you got some folds in there, you know? You got some folds in there. <laughs> no, it's over. nice. Like... <laughs> yeah. I know. There's just like this like kind of like alluringness to it, you know, just like Yeah. Kind of like draws you in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No question. Oh yeah. No question. But yeah, just like <laughs> the wind was like blowing super lightly, so like you didn't get super crazy kind of like sand flying everywhere, but this just kind of like floating ethereal kind of like sand just like kind of drifting, you know? Yeah, because if it had been blowing more, it'd be catching more light and then you'd have like too much instead of just having that like subtle glow along the edges like you have here. It'd be like filling in the background and, you know, you wouldn't have that black background like you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like kind of like when I edited it, like I wanted to kind of just like be gr this gradual kind of like lead you in, like get darker to light in the middle and then just kind of like fades off into the back. Yeah, it's perfect. I, lo I love how that brightest spot is right there in the middle where the lines converge. Yep. Yes. So good. The edge of it kind of reminds me a bit of like looking at the sun with a telescope, you know, with like the solar prominences. Mm -hmm. and... The sun's yeah. breasts. <laughs> <laughs> the one yes. giant. Yeah. One gi <laughs> yes. the, one, the one giant solar flare butt. <laughs> we call it a moon for a reason. <laughs> yeah, I was impressed by this one. I feel like this uh this is like a mature photo and you're a young photographer. Oh yeah, mature dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I mean I didn't even mean it with that like Alejandro, but... <laughs> No, it's like uh yeah, I don't know. I feel like most beginners wouldn't even like recognize stuff like this in the field, no. so mm -hmm. No, I, mean, I, I love definitely wouldn't yeah. have seen anything yeah. like this in my first five years. Yeah. I, mean, I love the sand dunes and I love like those classic like sand dune shots because I have a bunch of those too, just like chilling. But this one was just like absolutely insane when I saw it. Nice. So I recognize this one. Oh shit! This so one's I mine. This, the same little spot, but yeah, I mean, I I looked at this a couple of days ago, and man, this is really good. I mean, it's just the color, the lines. Um, Colorado, right, Jimmy? No, this is with no. Uh, this is Utah, Utah. from this yep. past fall. I was oh, shit. Uh, standing. Were you guys together? Yeah, I was. Yeah, standing, yeah. He like, came out and stayed at my house. I was right, like tell us, feet away. tell us about it. Really? Yeah. I, yeah. We were like standing pretty close. Yeah. yeah tell like, us about it. This is fantastic. Yeah. So was this in the morning or the evening before? Uh, this was in the morning. No, this was in the yeah. evening before. I think the evening. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Actually, like, actually, I don't remember. That was morning like, was cold as fuck, though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was the evening before. I think I, I think I pulled this from the earlier half, of, like the first half of all those photos when I was going through them. But um, yeah, this one's like we we went to that spot at like the perfect time. I forget what that spot was called. Um, we don't we need there, to say it. Yeah, but it was like uh, the timing was perfect because all the tr a lot of the trees were basically glowing yellow or orange you know yeah and like this spot was definitely just like you just had like a whole hillside of basically aspen trees that looked well, like we were this. at like this this like big lake and then the other side of it was just like this hill mm -hmm. yeah just covered in aspens like of all different colors this is just like a very small section of it so yeah. we were just like we were camped at that lake too like there's campsites all along the shore so we were like drinking beers and like had a campfire, uh, campfire going, just like shooting like right from where we were hanging out and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys nailed it. Good timing. Yeah. It was a really yeah. great overnighter. Yeah, the timing wow. was super perfect. Like, and this like spot was just like sparse enough to get you know, like a lot of the trees had already dropped their leaves, but this like section of it just like, you had some condensed, some not condensed. Have you have you printed this one yet, Jimmy? I have not. Dude, this I would mean, be I, super sick. Yeah. I actually have uh, one of uh, Eric's uh, Aspen Factory, which is like... Yeah, from really... the same spot, but like 2015, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, I have... It's very similar, like, photo to this, for sure. Um, a little yeah. more dense than this, for sure. Yeah, it was more full. Yeah. It had a little bit of green in it, too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is but, super um, nice. Yeah. Super nice. What I love yeah. about this one is, like, something about it, it almost feels like a double exposure... Because like it feels like the leaves like aren't connected to the tree trunks. It's like a weird optical illusion with this. Yeah, it feels like, like they're floating. Yeah, right. 
like like yeah. the like the trunks go through the leaves so it doesn't look like they're attached like it looks like there's like a photo of like bare trunks and then like a photo of like leaves yeah. that's like superimposed on it or something it, it, it had a really strange look to it in this section the secret is that it is a double exposure no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> are you are you spanking big sexy I was. Did you hear it? <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. And it's not a yeah. euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> a savage was on my leg. You have to like uh, put this as 18 plus, man. Yeah, exactly. The rating just went up a notch. Uh, demonetized. Demonetized. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Yeah. And just like um, they were, per they were at the perfect color too. Like they were yellow and then you kind of get like those hints of green but like not too much so it kind of mm -hmm. gives this like kind of almost like kind of spectrum of color yeah subtle variants so it's not all uniform how long uh out out there how long does it linger kind of like that like is it is that something that it depends lasts on the like wind because i came back a week later everything was bare and it was snowing and stuff yeah Maybe not even a week. Maybe like four days later. It was like the following weekend from yeah, when we you went. Yeah, you texted me like a few days later, I think, that you went back. Yeah. Cause, yeah, no, because I remember because I just went back and I was like, oh, damn, I just missed it. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, so, th that like... Oh, I made that, sure to rub it in. Yeah. That one after, <laughs> that one like afternoon and like the morning after was really, really good. Yeah, we were just there for one night. So we shot like in the evening. Then we shot in the morning before we left. And I have like... 15 photos at least that I've processed from there. Yeah, I have a few more, but mm. I just haven't gone to them. Yeah, that was a really awesome, like we nailed it. Mm. Like the timing was perfect. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Yeah, no problem, dude. Hey, you're welcome, Eric. So I stepped away for a second to refill, but what I, so maybe this was already said, but like what I love about photos like this or when you get this kind of like repeating pattern, but you, you have the perspective of knowing that it was way far away. So seeing that kind of large of a spread of a repeating pattern is always like very engaging to me. So I'm always really drawn to images like this. So, and I think you captured it so well. Yeah, there's nice balance here too, like the empty patches and the patches of gold, like it's all yeah. distributed really nicely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That, that kind of pattern of the, the circles of the top of the trees and the vertical lines of the trunks. Um, I think it's just really cool when you can capture something like that, but you know it's from, it's a huge area. It's not like something real close up. Yeah, it's like a pattern, but it's like literally so widespread, but still yeah. creates this pattern, you know? Right, because that's so rare. I mean, you don't see that a lot. I mean, it's, right. you know, I think that's why it's so engaging. It kind of makes you be like, wait, where where does that exist? Yeah, like we were standing like half a mile Here in Utah, baby. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys gone out to visit, visit Eric? Yeah, the, they don't the need to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm taking them all like a... Mesa Arch and Delicate oh, yeah. Arch. And... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a room at Eric's uh, dojo. <laughs> <laughs> is that his basement? Yeah. He, he says this is the Bowman crib. <laughs> what's, what's funny is like everyone like wants to go out to like Colorado in the fall and uh, yeah, like these other places and like uh, I, don't, I just shoot like around my house nowadays. Man, Utah's got it on, man. Yeah, so it's got lots of stuff up. close to where I live. A lot of work to be done there. Yeah. I mean, he made a whole book about it, so. Yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Chipping away. Yep. Hey, should we, should we pull into one of these stouts? I'm, I'm almost uh, done with this one. Here, let me uh, check it. I like I like uh, where Bowman's head is at. I know, I've been eyeballing this. This freaking stout is staring, staring me down. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go with Atlas of Dark Seas first. So was this the so one not, that you brought one. out? Because uh, you had like made a bottle of it to test it out, and you brought it. Is that this one? That is that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Boom. All right, so this is, is. Uh, Atlas of Dark Seas 2023 version. I've I had the 2022 version. Yep. You sent me that this, one. This is the second batch. Coconut and vanilla. Is that the same adjuncts as last time? Oh, yep. My Correct. 12.9 uh, percent. Yep. Did the ABV end up being the same, or did that uh, vary? ABV is slightly higher, so ABV is slightly higher. It was 11 last time? It was 11.5, so 1.4% higher. 40 months? You, may, you age this thing? Yeah. 
Wow. So like, did you just like keep some aside to keep aging it from last time? Honestly, the, the thing is with that is like sometimes you just kind of forget and you just like sometimes that barrel doesn't fit in anything until you find whatever it fits to. That's kind of what the case is here. So the last batch of Alice of Dark Seas also had a ton of maple, wow. maple cognac barrels and all that stuff. So this one was kind of just like, all right, I held it aside just for another batch of Alice of Dark Seas. Shit, I dropped some on my laptop. Dude, that is that is legit as fuck. Looks so good. Yeah. So the vanilla. But you made the, this all on your own, yeah? Yeah. Wow, that is really, so really good. So the vanilla, the Ooh. vanilla bean is different than last year's. Last year's I used Tahitian. Uh, this year I used a the a Congo uh, a Congo vanilla bean. Wow, dude. So last so, year's okay, go ahead. No, go you go ahead, Jimmy. So last year's vanilla bean was uh, from Tahi uh, was a Tahitian species from Tahiti, which gives a lot more floral kind of tropical notes. But this year I decided to go with a more like traditional con uh, vanilla bean from uh, from Congolese, and that gives off a ton of caramel and caramel and like classic vanilla flavors. It's kind of like you can totally but... taste that. And what was cool is like your what you were just talking about was kind of going to be along the same vein as my question is like just kind of deciding if you want to switch from the Tahitian to something else. What's what goes behind that? Uh, I mean, I just wanted to try out the Congolese and like um, I order my vanilla beans from a supplier and they give us like really, really nice tasting notes. And I thought that I will kind of want to change it up. I wanted to give it more of a Samoa's vibe this year. So I'm like, all right, let's get a more caramel forward vanilla bean strain this year or vanilla bean varietal. And let's try that out. And I think it worked really well. You get a ton of like that kind of sweet caramel kind of blended in with that coconut. It gives you like a really nice kind of Samoa Girl Scout cookie vibe. Love it. Dude, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, this is really, really good. Wow. And, and you're yeah. right, that that caramel flavor is definitely right there. The vanilla. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, it's it's great. The coconut. On yeah, the super end. good. Yeah, my favorite adjunct is coconut. I love everything that has to do with coconut. Hey, right. that's us. Every one of uh, us. I think we're all like sure. if it's got coconut, toasted coconut or whatever in it, it's yeah. the real deal. Yeah. Coconut and cinnamon, vanilla. I mean, those are all really good uh, attributes of a really strong stout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's where you get like overly maple or overly coffee. It's like, yeah, yep. hit me right. Bananas get too if it's done well. But I, I absolutely, also, yeah. I've also had I some. Made a, I made a, I've made sent uh, Eric some banana beers. I think yeah. when you can taste the banana, it's great. But a lot of times, I buy one that has banana in it, and the banana doesn't come through at all. Yeah, yeah. you gotta if you buy a banana beer, you gotta find one that like says a uh, wild Thai banana. That's like the most flavorful banana. Yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, so other half basically pioneered the 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 wild Thai banana. Like I think they were okay. the, they were one of the first ones to ever use that like type of banana. Because I remember I think other half Trillium Monkish and somebody else they made like a crazy roasted banana beer or something. Mm -hmm. I forget I forgot what that beer was, but um, but that was like a while ago. But wild Thai banana is like where it's at if you want like a really banana forward beer. Does that you think that holds up? over time as well like for example like if you sit on the stout for a while is that one of the flavors if it's a thai banana it's going to hang in there it'll hang in there but i think with most a lot of banana product it will like kind of start to fade off and kind of go bad i've had banana beers like get pretty awful like a year in you know year and a half in mm -hmm. okay Cause, like when you think of like a banana sometimes you're just like oh it gets kind of like mushy and like a little too sweet a little too rotten you know yeah. So, like with a wild Thai banana beer, I'd rather drink it earlier than than later. This is so smooth. It's exceptional. You did a really good Super job with good. this. Thank you. Yeah. It's. I mean, yeah, all the stouts that Jimmy has sent me have been really good. The balance, the balance is fantastic. I mean, dude, man, I, like, I can't say enough about it. Yeah. And with like, I think if I made this non barrelage, I think it'd be too sweet, but. A lot of that spirit character kind of lingers in the background to help balance out a lot of that coconut sweetness, a lot of that vanilla sweetness. And that's like my favorite part about barrel aged beers is like you get that extra dimension of flavor from right. 
aging in bourbon or aging in whatever barrels that you decided to age your beer in, you know? That's a really good call. I think, I think when that first, I used to hate barrel age because it used to be really, really boozy back in the day, but now um, it's, it's more of a, it kind of balances the whole thing out and you yeah. don't really taste that. Yeah. That's why I think a lot of people have strayed away from non barrel aged pastry stouts because like you get a lot of that sweetness up front, but you don't get a lot of stuff in the back to help balance it out. And like that barrel age just kind of gives it that extra like hit to like get rid of that sweetness and just like plays off a lot, a lot of that sweetness. Yeah. You need the counterbalance. Yeah. And that's just, and it's like basically almost an art form to, to blend a beer, right? Like you got to figure out what works and what doesn't work. And like you put it all together to make something, one thing that's super cohesive and like comes right. together. So this was probably born in a small batch and you're like, yeah, that's, that's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and nail that. Um, I mean, this beer is like a culmination of like a several recipes that have been made over, over time, you know? So you kind of just go in and you have a lot of these separate ingredients in separate places and you're just like, all right, what kind of goes together? What, what building blocks can I put together to kind of create this beer that I envision? Very cool. That's super good, dude. Hell yeah. Just real quick. I, I've had to, I had to step away. I'm, I'm working 24 hours tomorrow, so I can't be drinking anymore. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting into these later, Jimmy. Yeah, no uh, problem, man. Do your thing. But, uh, you, wait, you got a, you have a 24 hour shift. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but uh, I've been on this uh, non-alcoholic beer buying binge, as we talked about a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. They've been uh, kind of cropping up more and more. And uh, so the one the one I'm drinking right now is Brew Dog, which is a hazy AF IPA, which is actually the of the five or so I've tried by far the best one I've had. Nice. Um, yeah, like not even close. Athletic was good. Um, they had a hazy IPA. A couple other ones that were apparently by their ratings pretty good, but this uh, Brew Dog one they're out of New York, I think. Uh, I forget where they're out of, but anyway, it's really good. I just got it. Just got it delivered today, so. Nice. I'll have to send you some NA stuff with uh, some other stuff later. Yeah, dude, that'd be awesome. Yeah. You can drink a ton of hop water. There you go. So they That's basically what I do. They delivered it to you, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll, all of the uh, NA beers will deliver anywhere. Nationwide, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So, you can uh, get Great Notion, too. They, they have hop water stuff. I haven't tried it. I'll, yeah, I'll check them out. Um, yeah, I've had... Uh, so, so Brooklyn... Breweries, fairly big brewery. They've theirs was apparently like the one of the highest rated ones, and I got that the other day, and it was garbage. Uh, yeah, which sucked because it was high rates. So I bought like three, you know, I get like three. There was free shipping or whatever, so I got three six packs, and now I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> what am I gonna do with these? Yeah, um, you can fertilize your garden with it in this. Yeah, room. Almost just, uh, yeah, just put some like juice in it or something. Yeah, but Athletic is good, and this Brew Dog, which actually was the cheapest out of all of them. Um, it was really good. So looking forward to that. Get more of those. Yeah. Yeah. And a, and a, and a drinks are going to become way more popular in, um, in the scene for sure. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, it'd be nice if they become just as good as normal beer somehow. I mean, they, I think a lot of, uh, yeast producers are trying to figure out how to like engineer yeast to make the same flavors as yeast that makes beer, you know? So they're trying to figure that out and reverse engineer yeast to like, all right, how do we get these yeast to to make beer flavors without actually making alcohol? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Nice. So uh, yeah, this is the one that I chose, and um, you know, I think when I was scrolling through that drive of your images, Jimmy, this one stood out to me. I think because it's so, you know, you know, graphically uh, attention grabbing and uh, kind of. You know, evocative. It's, you know, the contrast between the darks and the, the light. I don't know if this is snow or ice on a pond or what it is. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's just it's incredibly intention grabbing. I and mean, kind of like I said with that other image that was just up, it's those kind of like repeating patterns. I, I don't know that this one was from far away, but uh, there's something about the very subtle symmetry of it. Uh, that's very appealing to me and so as soon as i saw this image i was like okay that's a one for sure mike yes. mike called that shit quick dude yeah. <laughs> yeah, i mean quick 
Yeah. He's like, dibs, yeah. this is mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that white, that like pattern of the white squiggly lines is pretty remarkable. I haven't really seen anything else like that. Yeah, it's like it was a super cloud. I was in uh, I was in Rocky Mountain National Park, and I was just walking around with my camera with uh, cause I was there for a show at Red Rocks, the the venue in Colorado, and um, I was just walking around with my camera with my friends, and I just like was snapping photos of uh, I think Bear Lake, mm -hmm. and I think this was the only frame that I had of of that like this was the only frame of this that I had. And one was, frame. Yeah, one frame. Dude, <laughs> yeah. what are the odds? Yeah, yeah, so awesome! Mm. Wow, yeah. like perfectly symmetrical, like in that. Yeah, and it's pretty sharp throughout. I mean, though, yeah, these water shots. We we talked about this a few weeks ago on an episode. It's like hard to uh, get them where they're yeah. they're fairly yeah, yeah. sharp. Throughout. I was I was standing pretty high up, so like I wasn't getting a lot of like front to back. This was yeah. kind of just mm. like this is everything was relatively like within almost the same depth of field. So that was pretty high okay. up. That makes sense. You, you yes. don't get that sense of it, though. It feels like you're kind of looking out onto it. Mm -hmm. It, it totally almost feels does. like uh, like residual like snow pack with mm -hmm. like water underneath it that's yeah. like reflecting something else or something. Yeah, it was like, like a super cloudy sky. So like, and I think I had the exposure pretty high. So like you kind of get like, instead of like the really, really like dark grays, you kind of get like a more of a white. Yeah. I really yeah. like the the gold and light brown tones in the background. Yeah. It you know just really offers a little bit more of a contrast to the white. It's mm. really cool. That's like when I first looked at this. That's kind of the stuff I was. The white's super obvious, but the golds and the light browns are really cool. Mm -hmm. I remember like when I was walking around the lake. I remember like slipping on some of the ice, just like around the lake, it's, like almost <laughs> eating shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fantastic image. Though. Thank you. There's Big Sexy. Hey, there he is. There I think that's his first hey there, like, appearance right in front of the camera. It's the show mascot right here. Yeah, it is. <laughs> right no, you gotta, wait, where's you gotta get hazy on the show, man? Yeah, you gotta get up. She's you gotta get up right to now. get down. No. <laughs> hazy versus Big Sexy, dude. Mascot. That's right. Yeah, mascot war. Yeah. Well, we had a little uh, expose with Mike's too uh, in the yeah. last episode. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we had to drop quarters in that show. Yeah. <laughs> Boys are getting after it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, we went medieval over there. <laughs> I'll have to get oh. Bear on the next time. He's yeah. around here somewhere. Dude, that guy's a beast. Bear? And then and then no. Bennett's cat is a motherfucker. He's cool as <laughs> yeah, shit. Hazy. hazy, hazy, yeah, hazy, super. Cool. Oh, super cool. <laughs> that right. is like how, the cat. All right, how's how's everybody doing on the first stout? I'm still I'm still working on it. Still working on it. Yeah. yeah. Still. That's very good. And Jimmy's like, hey. You fuck yeah. I thought when I was on a bruising new show. <laughs> Where's Hans when I need him? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was Hans, was, Hans, was Hans crushing beer on the show? Oh my god, yeah. Oh, bro! Like, you didn't watch his episode? Bro! Was, like, no, I didn't. Like they were going out of style, oh, man. He, oh, was just, dude, he drank more than any of us. Boy. Homeboy can throw him down, and he gets oh, him delivered. Man. He's a savage. Does he? Uh, wait, does he? Does he get beer from uh, what is it? Uh, what's that one brewery? Omnipolo. Um, Omnipolo. Yeah. 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 He loves oh, it. Man. He's down the road from where he lives. Oh really? He's a, yeah. Like he's on another right. game. I mean, his game is <laughs> it's just different. Dude. He was it's just different. warming up. You know, yeah, by the yeah, time we were he done, he was like just wine tasting like afterwards. Wait, he went wine yeah. tasting after? Yeah. Yeah. He was just cracking the seal. And we were his appetizer. Oh man. Oh, straight savage. Yeah. <laughs> that was really funny. Oh well, my goodness. There's another one from that uh overnight we did. Yeah, the same trip. That same area. Yeah, a little yeah, bit earlier in the one, day. This is the one I picked out. I, I just I love that that twilight moment, those those last few seconds, few minutes, if you will, like that you get when Sun's dropping down, tucking between a hill that's nearby, and just lighting things up. It just you you caught the moment really nicely, and mm -hmm. yeah, just, just capturing, uh, yeah, just capturing the tips. 
Yeah. yeah. Whoa, yes. <laughs> That's a tip, That's a tip yeah. baby. Yeah, like uh, this area had a ton of orange, like lots and lots of orange and red for the Aspens. Like and all around yeah, us, there's tons of had orange. a nice mix of color. Yeah, is that color pretty unique for Aspen? I just don't. Mike and I don't see Aspen over in this yeah. this side of the country. So, I think Eric. Typically, uh, yeah. they just turn gold, you know, like yellow, yeah. and then go to brown or black. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's like depending on like. Uh, like drought like if it's the drier it is the redder the leaves turn is what i've heard so mm -hmm. like that particular patch is you know they had access to less water or something that season and it changes every year like the same ones won't turn red every year it just right. depends on on how the conditions are just seems like a really cool moment that you you can yeah, is it in the morning is it in the morning or the evening this was in the evening oh cool yeah yeah like right before the, nice the sun like right before the, yeah right before the sunset yeah, that's dope. Love it. Yeah, super nice. Yeah. Do you remember when I I backed up into a bunch of brush? <laughs> when I was like pull, when I was like pulling backwards in the car. Yeah, with your rental. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hey, it's a rental. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, they, didn't, they, didn't, oh, they, so they didn't. They didn't. They didn't charge me for it, so we're good. Ah, uh, good man. Yeah, you didn't mess yeah. anything up, but uh, yeah, yeah, you were a little distracted, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Did you drive? Did you fly in and drive? Yeah, I flew in. Place? Yeah, I flew in and then rented a car and then. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think the in 2022 I stayed with Bennett and then the the next year he just had his kids so I had to rent a Airbnb. Nice. Very nice. But yeah, this was a great moment. I have like, I had one other frame that was kind of just like in the same kind of vein with the uh, the really high contrast glow and super dark darks. <clears throat> yeah, it's nice. It can be really hard to capture that too, you know, balancing the shadows and the highlights. You do a great job of that with this image. You know, to you know, block anyone either either end of the histogram out, which can be can be tricky to do and still make it, you know, still have that contrast and that detail. Yeah, really well done. So uh, I want to throw in one more because uh, nobody had really chosen any your images of the ocean, and there's a really nice classy wave scene here which isn't easy to do even though it looks easy like it looks simple but i feel like this is kind of tricky kind of reminds me of like is... rachel talibard stuff yeah it's dope i mean yeah. the, the texture the light mm -hmm. you got a good one here this is really killer yeah this is like uh, one of my favorite spots like just like on the bluff above like the ocean um i usually come here like all the time and uh it's one of my favorite spots to kind of just like walk around shoot photos of the waves and like most of the time i don't really come away with a lot when i'm just like out there but it's just like you're just above the ocean it's like kind of chilly and the wind's just kind of blowing you just kind of feel alive just above the bluffs i never have yeah, to come just, away. yeah i never have yeah, to come away just, with a photo but sometimes yeah I do. yeah are you are you at like 200 millimeters here you think or were you at this was probably yeah. like pretty close to three four hundred i was like pretty high okay. up there yeah okay it's so just fun getting how out. Is, how big is this wave? Is this like a? This is a this is a small boy. This is pretty small. Mm. Yeah. It feels big. Yeah. Ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can convince me either way. <laughs> yeah, I love that like emerald glowing green in the middle, mm -hmm. surrounded by the blue. Yeah, this was like pretty. <laughs> this is pretty late in the morning, so the sun was already like kind of high up there. Mm -hmm. Was this kind of hard to get or? We kind of just playing around. And... I mean, this was like a spray and pray, you know, just kind of like you see waves coming, just like <laughs> fucking shoot, just shoot, shoot, shoot. Yeah. This this reminds Mike of the morning he swam out of freaking Alcatraz. <laughs> so he's having a little bit of PST, PTSD. I see his eye twitching. Yeah. So black D straight to uh, what was that bar factor or something like that? <laughs> faction. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Black D straight to faction, man. I made it happen. You went, yeah. <laughs> you went right to the airstrip. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was absolutely out of there, man. Absolutely out of there. <laughs> that's what we count on Mike for. Yeah, that's yeah. what we count on Mike for. He's a fucking animal. Yeah. He's caught a wave out of there. But yeah, I, cool, I, I love I love the ocean. And I've, I've been there all of my life, but, you know, sometimes I get good photos, sometimes I don't. It's just being out there is the important part. Every day is a different day there. You know, yeah, it's exactly. Like, it's like, yeah, the very nature of the transient. Like, yeah. 
Very fluid. I can't remember. I haven't been to Santa Cruz in a long time. Is Are you guys getting decent fog there as well? Yeah, it's not super patchy, but you get, like, a lot of, like, the marine layer. Uh, if you want, like, really, really good fog above, like, mountains, you got to go up to uh, Mount Tamalpais. Mount Tamalpais? Yeah, yeah. That's, like, uh, like two hours north of San Francisco, and that's, like, the most popular, like, fog shooting scene in, in like, uh, northern California. Is that, like, see... wine country-ish? <laughs> Uh, not really. It's, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty remote. Um, okay. but it's like, you it's like, drive like two hours away and you're in San Francisco from the spot. It's not, it's not like Sonoma County where it's like wine country. Gotcha. Yeah. It's like north of Mirror Woods, right? If I... Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's in the same vicinity of Mirror Woods, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's like where you see all the, the shame bloom photos, you know, just from that spot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's, cr he's crushing that area. Oh Yeah. Nice, man. Well, great stuff. Hell Keep yeah. Up good work. Yeah. So, uh, I'm still working on this little pour of this last one, but uh, I want to get into this one because it's pretty cool. So, yeah. We definitely I'm need to crack get into it that. Pour it in a new glass. I'll keep working on these tonight after yeah. we finish. Mm -hmm. right. All right. So, ignore the description on the label. Uh, but it's the it's one of it's part of my darkest treasures brand. Basically, it's darkest treasures number five, my experimental brand, and it's the same beer as Atlas of Dark Seas, but I juiced it up with a little bit of Dolce de Leche, and finished Ooh. it with, finished it with a, a really dark roast coffee, kind of like give it a nice kind of roasty dark chocolate bitter kind of character. Nice. You know yeah, what you I like, Jimmy? Only... You only bottled this for the employees and then four extra yeah. ones just for us? Yep. Nice. That's you know all, what's cool? That's pretty awesome. Is you you, Thank you call out serve between fifty five and sixty five degrees. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, yeah. That's like I mean, Bennett sent us a text like an hour or two before the thr before the show and he's like, Okay guys, get your beers out, pop pop some tops, get things at the right rim temperature, just yeah. so we enjoy your stuff for what it is. And it's spot on. Mm. Yeah, like uh, a lot of the flavors come out at room temperature. A lot of like the spirit, like you drink whiskey at like room temperature, right? Yeah. So yeah, you'll love that Dude, spirit character. You liking that, Paul? That's, yeah. That's fucking great. Wow. So when, when you say you added dulce de leche, like how did you do that? Like... Did you actually add dulce de leche, like, or did you yeah, add did. like caramel and? No, I added dulce de leche. So, got Jesus, it from Argentina. Dude. Hey, Eric, when's but, Jimmy but... coming back on? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want to know. I don't give a we'll shit about anything else. Once a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once a month. Yeah. Once a month. <laughs> when's this bastard yeah. coming back on? Yeah. Dude, so how, how did like, you how did you go about adding that like conditioning it on that like? So I pulled, so from the initial beer, after it went through the coconut, I transferred maybe like 30 gallons of it off into a smaller separate tank and just like opened up the top of the tank and just added in like about a pound of Dolce de Leche right to the top and then recirculated, then recirculated using a pump just to kind of spread out the Dolce de Leche. You I mean, it bitch. definitely, definitely tastes different than the other one. So you can tell like something's been added yeah. here. Mm -hmm. The coffee is like super robust and like kind of helps balance out a lot of that sweetness that the yeah. de leche adds. I definitely taste the coffee. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I can tell like there's some kind of like pastriness to it, like some kind of cake. So when you, so this is probably a very stupid question, but I don't know anything about brewing. So like when you say you add the coffee, are you actually like brewing the coffee to liquid form? So the, the, the way that uh i add coffee to uh to beers is like i use whole bean okay and we we just like have the coffee beans in a separate tank and then we'll put the beer on top of the of uh, top of the whole coffee beans gotcha. uh, some breweries will actually brew a concentrated coffee and add it but i find that the coffee flavor is the best for stouts at least when you just kind of recirculate it through the coffee as a whole Did that that coffee flavor is real. That's great. So we got Holy the coffee from Cat and Cloud, which is like a roastery, which is right next to us. Nice. That's super cool that you 
you actually shared this one with us. I mean, that's yeah. so fucking yeah. badass. Yeah, I mean, this is like super limited edition. Like you could buy yeah. this if you wanted. To. I mean, I can't believe you shared this with us. I mean, it's really, really fucking dope. Yeah, that yeah, Jimmy's a legend. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy, <laughs> fuck you, man. This is so I told good. You guys, it'd be good yeah. when we had him on. Yeah, yeah. I, dude, you totally. He's been Bennett's been freaking pimping you for six months, dude. <laughs> well, and dude, we have all been, been looking been, forward to it. You've been selling me out to everyone, man. What is this? <laughs> yeah, promising no. everybody free beer. Where's my, no, where's, where's my where's my where's my money here, dude? <laughs> it's so good, dude. That's yeah. I'm glad we saved that one to last because literally that's that's a real that's banger. I mean I mean they're all really, really good, but I mean this hey, one's wait. special. Yeah. It's yeah, special. Mm -hmm. And just like um I think the coffee just kinda like really, really I don't I don't really drink coffee anymore, so like the most coffee I get is huh. this like what's, out of what's this. What's your problem? I was drinking too much Coffee's coffee best. at one point. I was drinking too much coffee at one point, so I'm like, all right, I'm going cold turkey. No, you did not, really? Yeah. Wow. So I'll drink like I'll drink like decaf every so often. Just because no like I because I miss the taste of coffee, but I don't really need it that much anymore. It seems like one of those deals where if you're really into beer and you really like good beer, that you're pretty into coffee as well. So that's yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. I've been getting yeah. some really good coffee lately. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I still enjoy coffee. I just choose not to drink it, you know. But like sometimes yeah. I just like, ah, oh, I love the I love the smell of coffee. Like the roastery is right next to where I make all the barrel aged beer, so I'll just get like a whiff of like the roasting coffee, just like oh yeah, um, as I'm as I'm walking out of the warehouse, you know, just like yeah, oh, how you cutting that, that out? So cold turkey and smelling that every day. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Just drink wow. the beer, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. Um... It to me being a brewer feels like really, um, like a really creative profession. Like you have a lot of liberties. Yeah, you yeah. can create yeah. some really good stuff. Talk to us about that a little bit. So like I I'm lucky in the way that like my our director of operations allows me to kind of just like be in a sandbox, right? Like I have all these barrels around me, and I can choose how to put them together. And he gives me basically complete trust to make something that tastes good. So like, I can experiment. I can basically just like play around and like, you know, I don't also box myself into a style, right? It's like some sometimes I'll just mix a stout and a barley wine together to make something good. At the end of the day, you just want to make a good beer. It doesn't have to be, you know, stuck into like one thing, you know. It doesn't have to be just a stout. It doesn't have to just be a barley wine. It can just just make sure it tastes good. Right. And, yeah. That's cool. So yeah, you don't really need cool. to be like purist or yeah, yeah, exactly. Just make stuff that yeah. tastes good and like at the end of the day, if it tastes good to me, for the most part, it'll taste good to most other people. Right. So, so we, all cool. your, we all want your job. Can you like take? <laughs> take I mean, if you guys, if you guys come to if you guys come to Santa Cruz, I'll just like pull some nails for you guys out of the barrels and just taste the beer straight out of the barrel, you know, before Pretty before good. it becomes. Before that would be there. so fun to like so do like a show like... where we get a tour of your freaking brewery and just look at some stuff <laughs> and then go through <laughs> photos. I mean, that'd be so <laughs> sick. Paul's like August a little kid right now. I know. I dude. totally am. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys, uh, if you guys do that California trip for sure, we can definitely make something happen. What do you think like last week of August? Yeah, that'll work, man. Twenty-six. Uh, you, you guys figure it out. I'm always gonna be there. Yeah, you're gonna be there. I'm. I'm talking to you guys, Paul, Eric. I, I'm. I can do. Last week of August is good for me. Yeah. Well, I'll see. Yeah. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. keep that one on the burner. I'm not gonna let I'm not that gonna go. commit to anything right now in the current yeah. state that I'm in. Yeah. Well, hey, we'll, we'll a, work on it when we're in Utah in a few man. weeks. Yeah. Oh, you guys going? To, you guys going to Utah? Yeah. Oh hell yeah! Where are you guys Big going? We're gonna do some uh, top secret Bennett locations. This shit is uh, under freaking. It's under a, wraps, It's on lockdown. Under wraps, dude. Under wraps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we gotta. Sh we're gonna show up, and he's gonna pick us up in a black black SUV and freaking put bags over our heads. Yeah. Oh, you guys are going out. <laughs> Spin you around for a while. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's this a is some cartel right shit. Yeah. Cartel right shit. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff what I learned in noise? Panama. Is that a is yes? That a rotor? <laughs> 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 exactly. No, we're super stoked on it. Hell yeah, that's sick. Mm -hmm. 
What's your next trip going to be, Jimmy? Your, uh, Patagonia? Are you going yeah, to Yeah, Pata, Patagonia. Nice. And then I need to make. Uh, I'm trying to make one more trip out to the to like one of the north coast of California. Nice. Before that trip. Those trees down there in Patagonia are incredible. That was like my favorite part about it. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm excited to be there in the oh, fall yeah. with like, cause uh, you don't get like the typical gold. You get a lot of red and orange. Oh, it's a whole like range of colors. It's crazy. It's like the whole rainbow. Mm -hmm. so the the shapes of the the shapes of the trees look different to me too. They're really characteristic. Yeah, yeah. they're really they're gnarly from, from from what I've seen. Super gnarly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the wind down there just like hammers them. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, like uh, yeah, it's like a two day trip down there, which is gonna be like, like two day like travel trip down there. So like, yeah, it takes forever. Mm -hmm. You take all these flights, and then you still have to take a bus like forever to get to the national park. Yeah, I almost contemplated like renting a car, just like drive around, but who's gonna take the bus? So it sounded like they close some trails kind of early in the season. Is that because of like? inclement weather coming in or what for sure yeah, that's yeah. the idea <clears throat> yeah the weather yeah. gets super crazy like because i'm pretty sure you don't really know what kind of weather you're gonna get i'm pretty sure we're gonna get hit with like snow and like rain at the same time or something like that that'd be Very sick possible yeah that'd be sick mm -hmm. are you going tricky. with a friend yeah i'm going with two other people oh good two other people non-photographers so i'm just be like all right i gotta stop here yeah right. <laughs> oh, that's rough, though. I mean, that's like that's tough to do. Yeah. Eric's not going back anytime soon. Mike and I might go. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm thinking Jimmy. about going next year. About dude, are you? Dude, I'm when down. I am fucking down. Whatever. Sign <laughs> me up. Hell yeah. It's it's been on my list for about five, ten years, and. It's hard to find people to go with. I'd like to go with someone, but I would definitely do it solo. But I would, it would be so much more fun if you were with like a couple of people. Yeah, with somebody that speaks Spanish. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be like this. Brujas. <laughs> You're like fucking bum and get in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> They're taking the car. Yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly. Man. Yeah, let's fucking do it. I'll go next year. I'll go anytime. Yeah, we should. Yeah, I'll keep you guys uh, posted on my plans, but uh, yeah, I'm debating. Yeah. Hell yeah, that'd be cool. I'm thinking about New Jersey. <laughs> Within yeah, reach, you, you know. Yeah. Like some good biofilms down there. Some uh, some city architecture, you know. Yeah. yeah. The Fresh Kills landfill, they, they <laughs> closed, and, and so there's like this nice, you know, grasses that grow over it. And yeah. At this sunrise, nice, like... You can get those PVC pipes coming out of it, too. <laughs> it's a nice little element to the... There's like foggy two... stink. Are you two weeks down there, Jimmy? Yeah, I'm going to be there for... Uh, yeah, I'm going to be there for about two weeks. Yeah, that's like I think, two, I think two to three weeks would be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, like 10 days, two weeks minimum, because I've spent seven days straight sitting in my tent waiting for the weather to clear, like literally yeah. horrible. Like, I think, yeah, I think the weather, the, rain. the weather in Chile, I think is a little bit better than Argentina, right? Could be. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah I think like having the opportunity to uh, be in the city a little bit, too, and get into the culture a little bit would be like a little bit uh, would be a nice mix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where would you want to go in Patagonia? I would probably I mean, I would like to go to some different places I've never been to that are like hard to reach and stuff. But uh, realistically, I'd probably just kind of go back to the same places I've been before. Maybe just that, explore yeah. a little further out like because I wouldn't be so I went I went three years in a row. So like I photographed those mountains that you can see from those two national parks like as much as i would like to so i'd probably just focus on like forests and like maybe venture out more into the woodlands because i know like mark adamus does like some crazy trips down right into the fjords right? and stuff yeah and things you can only access by helicopter or boat and stuff like that like mm -hmm. that that would be awesome like theoretically but expensive very expensive yeah someday yeah when you got that mark adamus money <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> Peter Lickman. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Well, good shit, Jimmy. Thanks for supplying for, the uh, amazing yeah, no brews and views. Cheers, man. That was beautiful stuff. Yeah, man. Jimmy. Thanks for, thanks for having me. It was uh, definitely guest. a pleasure. Thanks for sharing. Come back anytime, dude. Yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe like we... six six months down the line, you know? Yeah, this can't be a, a one-time, one-and-done. We need to have you back on with some... Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll let you brew another stout, so... I'm always, I'm always, I'm always making, I'm already like, I already have like three planned. So I was like, I'm nice. already down the line quite a bit. The second stout is tasting really good now that it's warmed up some more. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's really super nice. warm and it's fantastic. I think I mean, a lot of really... that, a lot of that like really aromatic coffee has kind of just like really kind of burned off now. And you get a lot of like that really sweet, sweet dolce de leche. Like that, like fresh, fresh coffee is just like loaded out right yeah it's, it's like it's gotten more sweet as it's opened up here for sure yeah awesome thanks dude yeah Great no problem you. thanks for having me oh yeah, I'm, I'm, so red. I'm so red now dude <laughs> it's <Yeah>. the lighting <laughs> yeah stage that's blow, right actually. yeah stage <laughs> blow. all right boys have a good night thanks for having me uh, you too jimmy Thank thanks you, again man, man. Take care. appreciate you you yeah, too yeah.